This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Enter offer code BANGBANG at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. Your pink panted tush makes my shy chubby blush. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. <laughs> Our guest does not like it. Thank you to the Voblex. Uh, co- uh, catchphrase All Star. That's from the Voblex. Come yeah, on, I know you're disappointed the Voblex. In the Voblex. Uh, catchphrase All Star. The Voblex <laughs> submitted that. By the way, I did not uh, credit our previous episode's catchphrase All Star Shampoodler for the <laughs> WebMD one. So I want to retroactively do that. Thanks to. Them, yes. I, almost, I almost said him. Honor, Ooh. honor restored to honor. the shampoodler name. <laughs> uh, welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. This is the best of episode number two, where we count down your top fifteen. Sorry, fourteen. God wow. damn it! Already. Okay. So this is number episode number two of a countdown of that counts down fourteen, 14 to uh, uh, seven to one <laughs> <laughs> to seven Evan. Seven Evan. Evan. Um, no, we're going to, on today's episodes, we're counting down the top 14. On today's episode, we're counting down 10, 9, 8, and 7. 10, in your 9, 8, and 7. Top 10 here. We're cracking the top 10. Cracking the top 10! Cracking a top 10! Do you remember baking a plain cake? Yep, I do. Remember that from I four years that. ago or so? Taking a plain break? A couple studios ago. Yeah. Boy. Wow. Yeah! yeah. We moved to the first year with yeah, studios. Yeah, 3.1 Street. Yes, we... <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was, it was something like that. Where I that think was also so, the address. But it was also the, the it was building. The floor. The floor. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. It was floor 1031 and above us was 1032 or that's something. That's right. That's right. But um, in our first Earwolf studio, it was in basically almost like a crack house. Um, yeah. That was a weird <laughs> it neighborhood. It was skeevy. Yeah, it was skeevy. Um, right next to a medical marijuana uh, place yeah. and uh, also right next to an alley where there were people constantly foraging for recyclables, I believe. There was also a cat Casting office in that same yes. building. So you'd see people occasionally that you knew, and you'd yes. be like ashamed, like you were going to buy crack somewhere, and they yeah. knew that, or be cast in something. <laughs> right, that <laughs> even worse. <laughs> and uh, we would hear air traffic a lot, and we would hear planes overhead a lot. And so anytime we heard a plane that was really loud. Uh, I would play that song in order to cover up the noise of the plane, and we would sing Taking a Plane Break, <laughs> no matter what happened. Mm-hmm. And I still, to this day, get people saying they miss plane breaks. And that was our holiday when you were <laughs> playing, when Paul F. Tompkins here was playing Cake Boss. Uh, he was doing his character Cake Boss. Cake we Boss. intentionally, after we moved to a soundproof studio, we intentionally sang one when people were saying, I really miss him. We, You said that you were baking a plain cake. Well, you, it was this long setup mm-hmm. where you asked me, you were asking me, what, what has anyone you, ever asked you to do a cake with no decoration? No frosting. What no. would you be doing then? It right. was like this. It was this very convoluted thing to get me to say the right. phrase baking, baking a, a plain, plain cake. cake. And then we then we played that and we sang baking yeah. a plain cake. A great moment in comedy bang bang history. A GM in CBBH. Ugh. But speaking of GMs and CBBH, <laughs> um, we are here. I am Scott Ackerman, your host, of course, for Comedy Bang Bang. And uh, I'm here with my good friend, Paul F. Tompkins. I'm Paul F. Tompkins. We are show business friends, mm-hmm. and we are counting down. And we are real life enemies. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that about us. That's the minute the mics are turned off. <laughs> constantly plotting to destroy each other. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Um, but yes, we are here counting down your top 14 episodes of the year of, of 2015. And, uh, in this particular episode, we've cracked the top 10. We're going to, uh, hear 10 through seven, uh, or is it eight? What is it? Yeah. 10 through 11. Um, and, uh, 10 through seven, 10 through 11, 7, 7, 7. And uh, some really great clips on this episode. I'm really pleased as punch. I'm glad to hear that. Mm-hmm. You know what? Here's what I was worried about, Scott. Yeah, man. I thought like, uh, hear me now. I thought that <laughs> the rhythm <laughs> that we would hear great clips in the first chunk mm-hmm. of best ofs, mm-hmm. and then this one, 
Uh, they they were going to be, be terrible. Good. No, but I then think you're telling me they're good. No, th these ones in this episode, I think A plus. A uh, more than C plus, which, which is, is your the highest standard grade. grade. Yes, yeah, you're yes, saying yes. why do we need other grades? C plus <laughs> yes, is above yes. average. Sorry, I ever did that. Uh, no, you, sh I'm you not. should be. <laughs> really, I kind of I'm proud of it. Here, here's what happens though: is yep. that you take people take those references. P a lot of times, apply way, them can, to other things. Can I say to anyone? <laughs> who is a fan of the show, who knows the C-plus inside joke, don't send that to people, guests on the show, who don't know the joke yeah. <laughs> without explanation. Yeah. Because occasionally people who don't know the ins and outs of this program, and why would they, are on the show, they think they did a great job, and someone sends them a tweet saying, C-plus job, and they're like, what? <laughs> they go, why would I ever go back to this show? So please, just send nice things. Do you know who does it the most is people who listen to Hollywood Handbook. Yeah. Will, and the craziest references, they will tweet to other people, and people don't know. And I had an exchange with Lauren Lapkus where she was like, <laughs> she texted me, said, do you know why people are writing to me saying they want to eat my hair? <laughs> and I said, as a matter of fact, I do. And I had to send her the whole explanation of that, which is from an ad those guys did on oh, their show. Geez. And so she um, she was like, all right, all right. That, I, I kind of figured that. And then like a day later, she tweeted out, whenever anyone sends me something that I don't understand, I figure it must be a Hollywood handbook reference. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, people send me uh, and you, I would presume, references from this show all the time. Uh, when, especially when the episodes come out, yes. I will wake up sometimes and there will be a ton of stuff in my in, bo in books. In books. That I don't. Some I, I don't I remember up, the episodes that well after. I after look we into my in books. In my in books. What's this now? What's this? Who? In my in books. The devil you say in my in books. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, what, is, who, what is that? That's Wales. What dialect is that? Wales. 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 Oh, so Michael Sheen. It's like a Bill. mix. It's a mixture between Welsh and Scots. What's in my in books? What's how the devil is in my in books? I feel like I can do that better than than I can do Irish. As oh, you're I, as I proved. <laughs> your legendary Irish accent. I thought I had a lock oh, on there, that. There was an episode of this show uh -huh. w that I think we recorded in March, and I was trying to get you to say Morch. Morch. <laughs> and you could, I don't and think I couldn't you remember it. it. Yeah. yeah, 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 Morch. I remember it now because people remind me of it. Morch. Morch. It <laughs> takes me a little while to catch up to it, but uh, I'll, get, I'll get the inside jokes. By yeah, the way, yeah. recent pyramid news. Speaking of inside <laughs> That's jokes. That's right. <laughs> some, there was there some was recent, pyramid, recent news. pyramid news. Dr. Ben Carson. I, a couple years ago, <laughs> what, how did it come about? I said recent pyramid news? It or was, I would think I was Richard Harrow. Okay. And there was somehow we were talking about pyramids and you were kind of giving me a hard time because... It, yeah, I don't know. It was like not. I think I. I, I can't I, remember. I was saying like, have we gotten any recent pyramid news? And you pointed it out. I think, but as, maybe. And since then, there has been recent pyramid been news recent pyramid with Doctor Ben Carson, yeah, who says that the fa the ancient Egyptian put uh, grain in grain, there. stored They're, grain, stored grain in there in those solid triangles. That's right. Um, ben Carson, by the way, awfully close to Bill Cosby. Really? Ben Carson, so? Bill Cosby. Ben Carson, oh, the Bill names. Cosby. Not the as a person. Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, Dr. Bill Cosby, Dr. Ben Carson, Dr. Bill Cosby. Bart the Bear from The Edge. It's Bart the Bear. Bart the Bear. Bill Cosby. Bart the Bear. Bill, Bill Ben, Ben, Dub Bears. Bart the Bears. Dub Bears. <laughs> Dub Bears. So close. Ben Carson. Dub Bears. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> this is what you're going to get. <laughs> Uh, every year in December for the last couple of weeks, uh, Paul F. Tompkins and I uh, uh, collect ourselves. <laughs> what am I trying we to say? We collect ourselves? Well, we come in in quite a state. Oh, my goodness. And, and then we have to collect ourselves. We, we've all had, we've had crazy days. Oh, my goodness. I, I, Heavens. It, 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 but I got caught in the rain. I had a newspaper over my head. Oh, I have the vapors. <laughs> we get down on our fainting couches. <laughs> <laughs> Someone comes in with smelling salts. <laughs> Brings us around. They snap mm -hmm. at our faces. Isn't that what smelling salts are? They they break them open like this. I I used to think oh, I when think I read a, about them. That's I, a modern medical thing. I think that they actually oh, have vials that snaps. they snap. Yeah, yeah. When but, I read about them, I assumed they were. It was like a salt shaker that they would like pour in your face. I always pictured it as a jar, like a weird oh, little jar, like a jar someone farts in and then opens it up under that's your nose. <laughs> exactly what I thought, Scott. How did you know? <laughs> it's like you're reading my mind. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe I can read mine. <laughs> yeah, that, this probably did it take it. that long to find out. This probably proves it. Wow. Hey, you know what? It's like limitless. I, won't I always, I've always said I might be bulletproof. I you could, might be. I don't want to That's find right. out. That's right. But I very well could be. I want that pill. Um. 
Give me that pill. Give me that pill. <laughs> what I if Limitless was just that? Give me that pill. Hey, I want that pill. I want, hey, I'm watching you. Give me that pill. <laughs> I see you with that pill. I want it. I'm walking here. Give me that pill. Give me that pill. <laughs> analyze this. <laughs> analyze that. Did they ever get to analyze the other thing? Oh, my gosh. Harold Ramis passed away too soon. Oh. R2-D too soon. R2-D too soon. He was a robot. He was a robot. Yeah, Harold Ramis was a robot. Um, Harold Ramis was, was a, a robot. robot. <laughs> don't joke about iRobot, though. <laughs> Please don't. Take care. Please. Guys. If we can impart upon you one thing during this holiday season, and it is Christmas Eve, by the yes, way. Yes. Uh, this everyone. Christmas, don't joke about iRobot. <laughs> Stop it! What a wonderful song that would be. <laughs> this, this Christmas, Christmas don't joke, don't about, joke about a robot. <laughs> we should record it. There's so much stuff to joke about. We should record it this We year. should record that for next year. For next year. We'll do yes. Okay. But this Christmas. Keep us to that. We'll forget about this, it. Is it this Christmas, don't make this fun of This Christmas, iRobot? don't joke don't about, joke about iRobot. iRobot. That is okay. the title. And it'll be country and western. All right. Okay, great. I'm, Country I'm and Western. Will it have like a little spoken word breakdown? Of course. But <laughs> okay. of course. We'll get special guests on it too. It'll be like a we, we are the world type thing. We have done one of those in a while. Okay. In a while. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, what you. we're going to do here is we're going to play you clips. You guys all voted on these. We uh, uh, voted from uh, Thanksgiving to Thanksgiving of this year, and uh, these are the episodes that you voted for the most, and uh, we're cracking the top 10, and we may as well get to it. Let's get to the first episode on today's countdown. This is number 10. Number 10. Mm-mm-mm. Ooh, baby. This is, okay. this is This is episode 365. Oh. As many episodes as there are days in this year, That's not wild. next year. That's wild. That's that, right. Next that year is, is a, wild. Next year. That, that is, is wild. That is weird, that is weird wild stuff. Crazy stuff. Wild. Wild. I, still can't, I feel like I still can't do it. That is wild. <laughs> I, uh, what is wrong with me? Apparently. Oh, that is wild. Apparently. That's another word that gets me into yeah. it. Apparently. With the finger. Yeah. Apparently. Oh, that is wild. Um, that is Carson, of course. Of course, that is Carson. Ben Carson. Great Carson. That is ben Carson. Carson. <laughs> Dr. Bill Cosby Carson. I cut open a human skull. I, that that is was wild. wild. Pyramids were used for grain. <laughs> that is wild. I think I should be president. That is wild. <laughs> that is, that's the wildest of them all. <laughs> not to get political. Yeah, not to get political. But he's a weirdo. He's a, weird, he's a fucking <laughs> he's, weirdo. He's a strange human being. He's a really weird dude. All right. Apologies if you listen to this show and you're somehow a supporter of him. I don't know how I, that would no, be. Not for me, though. No apologies for me. Okay. Apologies for me. Guess what? You're a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Episode 365, July 27. We're in the uh, midpoint. We're about Saturday like hump week. Saturday in the park. I think it was July 27. Boy, Jimmy Pardo just got three boners <laughs> popping through his skull. They're in the Rock and Roll popping Hall. Popping through his skull? Yeah, like boom, boom, and just like pops through his oh, eye holes at the back of his what head. What's wrong with you? What? That's why what I imagine. What? That That's what happened. <laughs> why is that an image that you have in your brain? Boom, 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 boom. Um, they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Just got in. The three Chicago. boners? The oh. three boners. <laughs> the three boners that pierced Jimmy's think, skull? Here, okay, do you think a band could have the name The Three Boners mm -hmm. and get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, uh, Cheap Trick got in there. Oh, yeah, and what does that mean again? That means a prostitute who's charge inexpensive. a lot. Inexpensive. Oh. Inexpensive. Um, yeah, Chicago's in, and I think Jimmy's going to do everything in his power to be there. To be, be at the induction ceremony? To be ceremony? at the induction ceremony. Because what if Satara gets in there and like sings a song with him? After all that we've been through, I will make it up to you. I promise to. And after all that's been said and done, you're just a part of me. I can't let go. Dun dun. Do you want to be there? We should go. <laughs> yeah, we should go. We should go and make it so that Jimmy can't go. <laughs> yeah, we should take his seat. Two guys that don't care. We should bully him. We should meet him outside Why don't the we thing. We bully him. And yes. we should kick his ass and Just, steal his tickets. Yeah. Start shoving him back and forth between us. <laughs> hey, punk. 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 Hey, hey punk. Hey. What are you in my books? <laughs> hey, punk. <laughs> We're here for Satara. 
That's the Midlands. That's how they talk in the Midlands. Oh, the Midlands. I got to get there someday. Got to get there. Got to get there. Um, okay, this is episode 365 from July 27. This is an episode called Bongo versus Bongos. Oh. That's right. This is Jason Manzukas and Andy Daly. That's right. This is the, uh, by the way, they, uh, they were uh, the winners of last year's countdown. Is that that's right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. They won uh, for episode three. 300, did they not? It was it was quite a saga. It's not a winning thing. They just, they were number one. Why are we doing this then? <laughs> That's true. Okay. They won last year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason Manzukas, of course, uh, people know him as Rafi from the league and uh, Andy Daly, who's been on this, sh- the, uh, both of these guys have been on the show for as long as we've been doing it. And Andy Daly has done several characters. Andy, Andy got uh, pretty busy this year and could not be on the show quite as much. He's doing review, his TV show. It's hilarious TV show, which mm-hmm. everyone should check out. And is in uh, critics, to- boy, I love when the top tens come out. Top ten, I do too, because you know you're not going to be bothered yeah. with people saying, "Hey, you exactly. made the top ten this <laughs> exactly. year." Exactly. <laughs> I, I, to be fair, I was on. People, some people gave me some nice notices for my stand-up special that was oh, on nice. this year, which was very nice. Yes. How many bang bang uh, went pretty uh, <laughs> unremarked upon? I wish that, I, and uh, I believe we did forty pretty good episodes this year. I, I agree. Wait, there's a, it's, there's too much TV. I'm just happy we're on the air. There's there's honestly. there's plenty of TV. I don't think. See, I don't think there's too much. I think that there is. There's enough that people can be entertained constantly. Yes. I remember back in the day when you'd be like, God, there's nothing on. Yeah. There's a lot to choose from, and mm-hmm. there's you can find the things that are to your taste. But I have to say, if you are if you're listening to this show, the Comedy Bang Bang TV show is so funny, and I, I I enjoy it every single week. Thank you so much. I mean, it's different from the podcast, it is. but it's similar but enough. It's hilarious. But, but uh, the sensibility, I think, is the same. You know, I feel like we did something never achieved by any sketch show. Mm-hmm. 40 episodes in a year. I yeah, think it's pretty it's amazing. It? But hey, you know what? And you each one very, not just funny, but very inventive. Distinct, yeah. Distinct. And, distinct, and we did yes. some things like the one take episode and the upside yeah. down episode. Anyway. Terrific, terrific guests. Um, it's on my top 10 list. I enjoyed it. It's on the top 10 list of my heart, but not the one I published online. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're just I, a, I feel, you're a Longmire fan? I feel dumb now. Longmire got so good. Uh, Blue okay. Diamond Phillips right. is on there. All right. <laughs> In any case, Andy Daly's review is on a lot of top 10 lists, and rightfully so. That's a great uh, show. And uh, so they were doing this episode uh, together, uh, reuniting. Uh, They hadn't done an episode together for a while. And uh, Andy is doing a character new to comedy (laughs) Bang Bang, uh, which he had, I believe he had started on uh, the Womp It Up podcast, which is a spinoff podcast of comedy Bang (laughs) Bang, the Marissa Wampler. The first comedy Bang Bang spinoff. Maybe I can't recall. Is I it the first? That it is. I'm not sure. I don't even know at this point. I the, think that it is the first one. Some a people character would say, that was created on that show. On some this people show. would say the Andy Daly pod, uh, pilot oh, thing, sure. but but he created a lot of those characters before Comedy Bang Bang. But, but then so did. J- uh, Jessica St. Clair did Marissa on stage once. and that's, Oh, did that's, she really? Yeah, I saw her do it in a UCB show. She oh. had like a neck brace. I think it may have been one of the only times oh. she ever did it on stage. Then it's not a spinoff at all. Okay. So there have been no comedy. There have been no spinoffs. spinoffs. Thank you all very right. much. You really led me down the garden path on that one. <laughs> but um, so this is a new character that Andy had done on one episode of Womp It Up. This is a teacher at uh, uh, Marissa Wampler's high school, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is the health teacher. And uh, one thing I need to mention, because other, uh, otherwise you'll be confused, Talkin' Tang is a <laughs> podcast that Jason Manzukas had decided he was going to start in a previous episode. A That's previous right. episode we may hear from a little later I in our countdown. But uh, he mentions Talkin' Tang a few times. That's what that is about. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is it. This is Jason as himself and Andy Daly playing Jimmy Bongos. And this oh. is your- I thought it was Joe Bongos. I can't both. remember. Okay. It's both. Right. We'll talk I, about I, it. I, this okay. is, this I is, remember now. This is your number 10. <laughs> number 10. Please welcome Joe Bongo. How's it going? How are you? Hello, I'm Joe. Good to be here. I brought my Bongo. <laughs> 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 you certainly did. <laughs> Holy cow. This is my second podcast. I was on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the bar Womp Wampering. And I was on that one, in the, and uh, I forgot you. I didn't bring my bongos. And I said the whole time, I should have brought my bongos. And so now I got them. Oh, oh, so you were on Womp It Up. This I, is the person I know from Marina Del Rey High School. Is I, I know a couple of people I know, Mar- uh, yeah. uh, Marissa Wampler. That's the one. Yes, and, from uh, the Stars Whistler. program. And, yeah, right. Exactly. The two of them have the Wampers, and they do uh, the podcast, and I was on that. And 
it, we, we had a lot of fun. Her, her, her birthday oh. is coming up. I, I would imagine we'll see her real soon. Oh, she got a birthday coming up? Yeah, she does. That's yeah, so in August. funny. It seems like everybody's got a birthday. <laughs> yeah, once you a year I mean? about. Yeah, I don't Wouldn't know. Wouldn't that be great? Here, here's the thing. Every time I turn around, it's somebody's birthday. Joe, do you have a birthday? I don't have a birthday. That's you the don't. interesting thing about it. No, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Is that because you were adopted or because you just, you don't know the date you it were born? It was just never or? a topic of conversation, like when were you born and all that stuff. Who like, was, was it? Never was your it. parents? No, we never never, did about you know your parents? I did. I, yeah, I knew my parents, but we but, just had other things to talk about. So when you <laughs> heard about the children at school talking yeah. about their birthdays, you never thought, hey, that's something I should bring up to my parents. I don't know. It never occurred to me. It's just, oh, you got a birthday? That's great. Hey, yeah, so he, he does too. You know, that's There's weird. always Can way more. Any question? Do you have any siblings? I don't. Have, no, I got no shit. Oh, just me. only child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's way more interesting things to talk about at the dinner table. Yeah, you know, I like politics so. and sure, art or religion. whatever, diabetes, <laughs> or, uh, you know. Let's, have a, let's, have, let's talk about diabetes How often, for one second. How often would you talk about diabetes? Oh, all know? the time. It was a constant topic. I have both my parents were di- diabetics, and uh, yeah. So Your we parents had, were diabetics? They were both diabetics, and we uh, talked a lot about that. Did yeah. you ever have to, uh, you know... Inject them with. Oh, the, sure. Uh, that would, yep. Yeah. That's, well, well it's part of the reason I became a health teacher. I, I had such an interest in health. Oh, we, we used to talk about how can people diabetes, be healthier? Poor venous blood circulation. We used to talk about uh, 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 eustachian tube restrictions. My, that was an issue my father had often got ear infections. Oh! <laughs> hey, punctuating with the bongos. Always had an ear infection, my father. Oh, yeah. wow. Really? Yeah. Well, well, Chronic depression, uh, alcoholism. He, yeah, he had a lot of issues. He was always trying to get into the army. They wouldn't take him. Uh, re- always trying to get in the always army. Up to, get up to the what army. point in his life? He's still trying to get in the army. <laughs> okay, so he's still six years old. He'd like to serve. Yeah. Well, well you know that's, that. It's, you know what? That's an, that's impressive. Yeah. That is. Yeah, you know, that's him. a great uh, instinct there. To he goes. To what serve. he does? He travels all around the all around the country. Sometimes all around the world, just to army bases, and just tries to lend a hand. <laughs> well, you know, you you can serve your country, and I guess the people of this country in other ways, uh, other than the army uh, or the armed forces. I would imagine you can volunteer at. Uh, you know, at uh, places that help others. I wish I had thought of that as a thing to advise him of at some point. And, oh, oh, <laughs> that never oh, came up. Years. No, he's just still trying to but get. But you it never out. had a birthday. I never did have a birthday. That's I don't really know why. You never, I got never got a, you never blew up birthday candles. No, not no, not wow. my own, not my own. Oh, you'd blow you, it. So what? you used to go to birthday parties and blow on other. Ah, you know how it is when you get impatient. You know, they're sitting there dragging it out. You know, I've, I, here's what I wonder. As a health teacher, maybe yes, you have. Yes. Uh, I've been I've been looking at people blowing on birthday cakes, and Jason, this must just gross you out, right? People blowing on candles. Oh, what are you a germs like, guy? Think, yeah, think, no, think of a, all the spit on birthday cakes. So gross. It's gross, isn't it? Super like gross. what a weird like just here's here's what I suggest: put the candles on a plate or something. Here's here, let me put, let me do it for you this way. Yeah. Imagine how happy everybody is to receive a piece of cake that someone just spit all over. <laughs> yeah. And now imagine that right before putting your food down in front of you. A waitress or a waiter at a restaurant bl- <laughs> just blew on it. Just blew and it then a kiss. Put, then put it down. <laughs> Would you be like, oh, cool? I was like, here's your plate of curly fries. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just she's blew. a stranger. I think the test for whether you should go to somebody's birthday party is am I comfortable eating their spit? Am I intimate with this am person? Am I intimate enough with this person? I'm comfortable eating Have their spit. Have you been to a birthday party? I've been to lots of birthday okay. parties. Okay, so how many? <laughs> so let's see. Okay, well, I want to go back to 19. Uh, yeah, let's list them off. This is good. <laughs> Would have had a birthday party. I have my aunt. How old are you, by the I, way? I, I, right Definitively? now. Definitively. <laughs> Definitively. I really don't know. You That's don't know. I really have no idea. Well, do you have a rough, but how many you times? Have a rough I, guess? I, no, I feel like I. You sound I, old. How many Julys have you encountered? I wish I'd be keeping track of Julys or any of the months. <laughs> when right? was the last the time you were in school? July, I have not. Well, I work at a school, so that's all. <laughs> okay, well, that's true. Okay. How many? You how many years? You know the concept of years. I, well, 2015, 2014. I know that there's a. Oh, there's only what one. What was the Christmas, earliest one you can remember? There's one Christmas in a year, and there's one. There is. Okay, so you celebrate How many Christmases have you encountered? How many? I, I'm not keeping track of Christmases, you guys. <laughs> this is a real problem. Do you, I how feel... many presidential elections? How many presidents have you oh, seen? Oh, God. All right. Well, that's a great one. The first guy I voted for was John Anderson. <laughs> Wait, that's a right-in candidate? That been, that's like the 80s, right? <laughs> that would have been, I don't know. Okay. I don't know years. So you, okay. Interesting. But well, he's he a health was, teacher. He doesn't, he's not a okay. math guy. Sure, that's Not true. a math guy. Yeah. You don't How many Olympics have you seen? Oh, wow. 
<laughs> winter and get summer. Confused because there's certain. If it was easier, if it was a more sensible breakdown uh, between what's a winter game and what's a summer game. Why okay, are they how playing? Many long bas- why are they playing basketball in the summertime? That, that, that's, they have, well, I mean, they started doing that what in 1988. I believe. Is that what they started? With just, how many long jumps? How many long jumps? Teams. I guess we're gonna have to just. Wait. I have seen 18 long jump competitions. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. That so one every four years, that that one sometimes four. 64 years. Yeah, somewhere in there. So I think, or 60. Yeah. Yeah. I feel 18, confident about it, but 40, sometimes these are semifinals. I don't know. <laughs> 50. Oh, okay. All right, but like My old is... guy-ish. <laughs> I feel, you know what? I always say you're only as young as you feel. Oh, you know, so okay. I feel like I'm like 16, 17 years old. Oh. Like, I got a lot. You know what I mean? I have a lot of energy. Music must keep you young Yes, as well. music keeps me young. How long have you been playing these bongos? I've been playing a bongos. Let's see. I found a pair of bongos under the pier. And that had to be in, like in uh, Marina Del Rey. Down there in Marina Del Rey. Are you born Rey. and raised? Uh, no, I went all around the world. I followed my dad from Army Base to Army. We were Army brats. But he know? wasn't in the he Army. He was not in the Army. He just army. tried to help out. We were, well, trying to he get just, in there. You would move to base town. He was under he the impression just... that you could, if you if you got rejected at one place, you could go to another place. <laughs> <Okay. you know? laughs> he didn't realize it was he a national It's thing. all one army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was so a, so yeah. you must not have lived places for very long because he would, yeah. I'm assuming, instantly be rejected. Yeah. And then he would have moved for no reason. And then you got to pack up and move again. To the next Army base. He heard the expression, you and what army and took that literally thinking there were several different he ones. He heard the expression you and what army. Okay. Don't try and figure it out. <laughs> I don't you know I what? I'll tell you right now, Joe yeah. Bongo, he's going to say a lot of stuff that you're going to need to like gloss right over. Come hey, on that's now. no problem. I, Otherwise, I, we will look, be ground into a nightmare. I don't understand a lot of the things I hear and that's yeah. alright. Hey, that's I got a wish for you. D- yep. Okay. <laughs> you heard all the wish. Things. I did. For one year, everywhere you go, yep. here's my wish. Yep. For you to wear a denim shirt and a white <laughs> cotton pair of pants. <laughs> So flipping it, turning it on its head. I did consider. I did consider yeah. for a while summer, semi summer, summer. Just, just like turning it upside down. White, it upside white out. jeans and a blue Oxford. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And then labor, the day after it. Labor Day, I own it. I just have never yeah. worn it. Um, white jeans are problematic, though. You get them dirty, and you got to, you know. Oh, I mean, especially in the amount of times I shit my man. pants. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I, oh, then yeah. white jeans are not for you. If you were a frequent uh, pants shitter, that would be advice. Though. Can I ask you a question, Joe yes. Bongo? You found this pair of bongos under the pier. Yes. Do you know who they belong to, or did you ever see a lost and found uh, uh, There was item? a guy sleeping next to them, but I didn't necessarily know, you know, those his or whatever. Uh-huh. You know, somebody, I don't know. Uh, now, name. was your name Joe Bongo at the time? Or I know, I was not name? going by Joe Bongo. Okay, so this is a gnome de plume, or not a gnome de plume, but a stage name of some sort. Well, I, no, I say, call me Joe Bongo, because my thing is the bongos. I'm Does okay. anybody call you Joe Bongo? Everybody calls me Joe Bongo. I certainly Mr. Have. B over at school or whatever. This is Joe Bongo. But you're not yeah. a you're yes. not a music teacher. You're a health teacher. Oh yeah, I'm a health teacher. Do you incorporate yeah. the bongos? I don't into know your... music in that sense. In that uh, way of like, I know I'm aware that there are notes, and I'm hmm. I'm, I'm I'm under the impression that there's sheet music. Right. But I'm not, I don't know it. You're under sense. the impression. That I'm under the impression music. that there is. Sheet well, when music. can you confirm? <laughs> Do you think I'll you get think on it can... immediately if that's what you guys want? Because we can probably produce. Sheet music, just in case that's weighing on you what at I'm all. Is that can be settled. Look, there are great questions in life that we all wish we knew the answers to, and it, it keeps us up at night. I've we can answer musicians. this one for you. Because I've seen musicians and they got the music stand and yep. there's something on there, and I don't know what they're reading a magazine. <laughs> You're seeing the back of the paper. I've only seen the back of the paper. <laughs> sure. I mean, I've heard the term sheet music. Oh, like, yeah. is that you ever like that is? tap is them on the music? shoulder and say, hey, you, you mind turning around and give me a look? I never thought because I don't want to go up there and interrupt sure. your performance or anything uh, like have that. Have you ever? Did I, you uh, have you ever? W- w- did you study the bongos? Did you pray? Did you have lessons at all? Are you self-taught? Oh, I totally self-taught. I'm an autodidact on the bongos. Mm. I've to- totally come just completely self-taught. I mean, I picked up a few things at the drum circles down at the Huntington Beach drum circles. So, so was, you, you would you would see and hear someone do something on the bongos like a tip tap tap, and you yes. go, "Ooh, I got to put that I in there." I could try that. Tip tap tap. Sure. Yeah. What what is the basic principle? The guiding principle behind the bongos. You hit them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. Well, tried to, you tried to do it as many times within the beat as possible. Is oh, that what okay. it is? Well, I, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Cram in a lot, a lot into the beat. <laughs> now, do you, like, are there just songs? feel it. It's really a feeling. You gotta what feel, is it? You gotta know. What you gotta, do you do? You so, like, feel it. let me lay down a beat and yeah, you yeah, show yeah. me the oh, basic principles of the bongos. By the way, so, I take requests. So, any re- song requests you guys have, I can play anything on the bongos. Oh, let's, uh, that's oh, great. That would be great. I sure, love that. That's what I do. You're so vain. When I do parties, you're so vain. Yeah, see, I just Sounds feel it. Kind of like a Martin Denny I, tune. I don't know that I that was I felt the song, and I just, you know. That's it, it, I, I, you, like, 
You definitely took on a different physicality yes. when you play the bongos. It's, you, yeah, you I you, you, you hunch over and you sort of become depressed and like your your <laughs> eyes start to squint really really hard. And... Well, you know, I kind of put I, I go into a character in a way when I play bongos. You know, <laughs> I don't know what what's that, that is? guy's name. <laughs> Jimmy Bongo, totally different guy. Totally different guy. Oh, so when you're playing the yeah. bongos, you're Jimmy Bongo. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess. You I just I adopt an attitude. I adopt an attitude when I'm playing it's the great. bongos. It's great. It must be that so must you, be great on stage. Do you ever perform live? Oh, sure I do. I'm in a band right now. We're called Rosebush Red, and it's me and it's a bunch of the students at the high school. And I'm I'm always oh a, a yeah. ro- like a rock and roll combination. Yes, it's or? a rock and roll combination band. Yeah, that's oh, right. Okay. And I'm the bongo guy, and I put the band together. What I, be, you I could, put the band together. I've been at the school now for many years. I don't know how many Christmases or Olympics it's been, but it's been a lot of long time because a lot of the kids have come and gone, you know. Sure. And, well, I bet some have passed away. Uh, probably, sure. As a matter of fact, I know, yes, a, lo- a number of them have. Mm-hmm. Yes. Drunk driving? Yeah. You know uh, that it, Okay, so you driving. know a number of them. So you have more certainty as to student deaths yes. than the existence of sheet music. I have been <laughs> alive for 33 student deaths. <laughs> <laughs> could have all been in one year. Could, there could be one bus accident. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, uh, I don't want to talk about that. But, because <laughs> okay. I'm parking lot security, and it's my job. Basically. Oh, you know, it's one of right. the things. So you're, you're a man of many, uh, many interests. I or pick many up a few extra dollars. Uh, yeah. Parking lot security. Yeah, yeah, you do yeah. really. Oh, sure, so yeah. and that's after school, or that's like right when the final bell rings. You hustle on over there to the parking. Great lot. question. I'm there in the morning, and I'm there in the afternoon. Morning and afternoon. <laughs> oh, and just like that. Look at that. At 6 yeah. p.m., you punch out, or I. I can leave there. When do I leave? I don't even know because I don't have a watch. But I leave when it feels like <laughs> when it feels like there's nothing else going yeah, on. Yeah, there's not a lot happening in the parking lot. I can just get out of there. Do you ever try? Do you ever like do kids hang out in the parking lot? Is oh, it, sure. Is it like a scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine sometimes the moon is really high and just like you know you're there till one, two a.m. Well, you know yeah. what's weird? There's different times of the year. When the when it gets darker earlier, so you can't necessarily. Yeah, we know. Well, we, no, know. we saying, know a lot about time. You, do you? We have watches and yeah. Do you? Yeah. I don't have one. Do you but, have a sundial at all? Or? No, I no. don't even know what. How do you is. show up to work on time? I I don't really. I mean, in the just sense, just whenever that, it feels like you should be there. Well, yeah, in the sense that relative to other people. You know what I mean? I don't show up necessarily. Do you have like? Do. do you live by the school and have binoculars? And when you start to see people trickle in, you go, "Oh, I got to get there." No, that would be a great idea. I just kind of I wake up and I do what it feels like I have to do at home, which is sometimes you know eat something or whatever, or, you know, put on pants, and then I go and I just go. And sometimes I'm there hours early, you know. I'm there so much earlier before anybody else. Sure. A lot of the time I'm there, you know, way later. <laughs> the pants thing. And it's just, it just takes yeah. a little longer than you thought. Well, hey, if you don't have a clean pair of pants. Sure, you oh. got to go down to the laundromat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you got to putter around looking for her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I ask you one question before we get to the band? Um, you you, sure. you become Jimmy Bongos when you play, <laughs> well, and yet saying, Joe Bongo know. is your stage name. Why didn't you just pick Jimmy like Bongos? That. What do you mean? I'm, what I'm saying is there's, there's, there's the me that I am every day and the, who teaches a health class and who plays bongos a little. <laughs> that's you know, Joe Bongo. That's Joe, that's Bongo. Joe Bongo. Okay. But, he's then, like, but he sounds like a real square almost compared to this Jimmy Bongo. Oh, well, man, yeah, right. That's true. Because when I'm playing the bongos, I adopt an attitude. I become kind of a like. Sure. Bongo. Jimmy Bongos wouldn't be a health teacher. You no, know, Jimmy, yes. forget it. No way. <laughs> Jimmy Bongos all day, all night is the Bongos. Uh, yeah. And one further question. Why is Jimmy Bongos pluralized and Joe Bongo is not? <laughs> That's a great question, and I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, all and right. That's what's great about that's, it. And, and, great. You're, 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 and that's what's interesting about you that yeah. I'm enjoying is just okay. like you have like a real <laughs> lust for life. It seems like as long Can as you play got lust these- for life. <laughs> That's a real song that, yeah, yep. that, that I can, yeah. Yep, I get it. There are certain songs you can pick out by their drums. Yep. Like uh, Come Together. Can you do Come Together? Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. I mean, you had a there's few always, more. of course, Wipeout. Yeah, why? Oh. <laughs> Wipeout! Oh, I really 
tired. Wow, man. That's a hard that was one. great. You can barely play one <laughs> song before getting tired. You're so tired. Yeah, it seems like you just got oh, real tired. You're really winded. You now. laid down on the floor and pulled the microphone all the way down. <sighs> to you. Take a little nap. Oh, Wait, is there time for a nap? Is there a nap time as a part of this podcast? <laughs> we usually don't do nap time in the, po- in the middle. Part of the podcast? There, that would just be 45 minutes of just silence, I think. Uh, yeah, well, you can fast forward past it. I guess so, but that's you know that's yeah. a lot of data to be putting into people's <laughs> iPhones. Oh, that was we go with you. That was really satisfying. <laughs> Wait, you don't Did like you iPhones? I'm tired of these iPhones all the time. They're oh, garbage. you an Android you know, guy? But no, I'm not an Android guy. No, he's not asking if you're an Android. I'm not an Android, and I'm tired of the question. <laughs> Why is everyone asking you this all the time? I don't know, but it comes up a lot. <laughs> you know, are you an android? I'm not an android. I wrap because you know what it is. It's part of it's certain times of the year. I wrap my torso in uh, tin foil just to keep warm. <laughs> and keep then it's like, warm. What? does that what reflect times, the sun? What times of year? It's like if what during those times of the year that when it's when the sun is not up as long is when it gets when it gets darker earlier. Okay, see, then, I think that tin foil. Well, I guess it probably. Would yeah, that is called That's, winter. Yeah, Christmas is around then. Huh? <laughs> Christmas is around then. Sometimes I got tin foil on my torso on Christmas Day. Okay, and it peeks out from behind the shirt, and you get uh, all these stupid. Do people questions. think you're a present? And they try to unwrap you. I've uh, no, listen. It's been a long time since I've been unwrapped. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a Do you have a family? Do you have a, uh, a partner? No, I don't. I was married for a little while, but the problem is you cannot uh, wear a wedding ring if you're a bongo player. So it's uh, not possible. Oh. It's just basically not possible to you, be married if you. You could just, just take the ring off to you know while you're playing well, bongo. Wear the ring. Think think around so. your neck maybe well, as a symbol of your love. here's the issue. Here's the issue. Yes, I was married and I had a wedding ring. And whenever I played bongos, I took off the ring. You got to. Sure. And then it's like, it's Uh-oh. open season Then you're me. dripping in pussy. Yeah, that's the problem. And it's like, yeah. girls, you know, it's, it's a deadly combination of the bo- You know, it, let's face it. It's pretty but, sexy. The bongo is a sexy instrument. And you don't have a wedding ring on your finger. You're gonna get fucked. But Joe, let me fucked. ask you well, this. Oh, all right. Primarily, is that, is that proper though, language for a health teacher? It does sound like primarily you are playing to high school students. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Most of the t- most, not all the time. I do go down the pier, but a lot of the time, yeah. I'm so playing. that that is, yes. provides a whole other set of problems if you are an unmarried man. Well, and you're always getting dripping in puss. Drip, if you're dripping in if puss, you're always talking tank. If we'll you're talk talking tang. Look, Drip I don't know, because as you like know. from one ta- from one tank talker to another. You want to talk tank? <laughs> <laughs> Has this started to become an episode of Talking Tank? Is this the pilot? Slowly, slowly <laughs> establishing this as a backdoor pilot for Talking Tank. I'll talk tank. If you want to, if we're talking tank. Yeah, it must be almost because Jimmy Bongos is sure. one of the most erotically charged people I've ever seen. Oh, no doubt life. about it. I mean, no doubt. I'm not going to argue like with you that. Joe Look, Bongo, we have eyes in our heads. We you can Joe see Bongo, this. Pure normal, sex. total. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying chatting with you, getting to know you. When Jimmy Bongos just played Wipeout, yeah. I got turned on. Thank you. And I, if good. that uh, happened to me, just, I can only imagine women yes. listening intimately with, through earbuds must yeah. just be like fettuccine alfredo in their Through pants. earbuds, oh. you think? So they're listening on an iPod, or do you mean through their ear holes? <laughs> Hello? What, what do you mean? You, you said they're listening through earbuds. through earbuds. Yeah, that's what those little you're headphones talking, are called. Yeah, yeah. So you're listening to recordings of him? No, the women who are listening to this episode of Talking oh, Tang right now. Oh, okay, I see. They just heard Jimmy Bongos just annihilate yeah, 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 and yeah. must just be dripping wet. That's mm-hmm. probably right. That's probably right. Yeah. We I, think, I feel like it. we should end this episode of Talking Tang <laughs> and really? get back to, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know that his sex life all is right. germane to why he came on the That's show. That's fine. Let's do plugs. <laughs> no, no plugs. <laughs> We're going. All right. Let's and do I, plugs for this episode of Talking Tang, oh, I mean. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. Do your plugs. <laughs> no, just, let, we can move on. <laughs> so uh, you're in yes. this band. What is it? The Rose, Rose, Rose Bush Canon? Red is the name of my band. And it's made up of, uh, I'm, the, I'm the only faculty member on the band. I, but this band has been going for a long time and it's just sort of cycles through How other long? members as they graduate. I'd say it's been about uh, 15 or 18 Christmases. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. And then people will yeah. graduate and they're kicked out of the band like Menudo? Uh, well, it's not that they're kicked out. I'd be more than happy. A lot of them are very talented. I'd love them to stick around. And, and, and I've once or twice. I shouldn't say this, but once or twice I have flung somebody in health class just so they can stay stick around. It was for like a year particularly because, good guitarist. Well, if you got, you know what? It's been in both instances. It's been bassist because it's hard to find somebody who wants to play the bass. Yeah, so get somebody who's great on the oh, bass. Yeah. Yeah, that rhythm section hurts to lose. You got to lock yeah. in that rhythm yeah, section. Yeah, you give them an F in the uh, in the health final, and then they got to stick around and you know for another year. Is scolio Wait, another <laughs> year just for health class? It's happening in both cases. Like, <laughs> these are smart kids, and they, they all A's and B pluses and whatnot. They flunked health class, and that's it, but. 
buddy. You're around for a whole other year. Yeah, it'd be just like a summer, like three weeks. Yeah, can't like, you just make it up? I am the summer school teacher, and in those, uh, I shouldn't be telling you any of this stuff because in those cases, what I'll do is like I'll wait right up until the beginning of summer school, and I'll say I got a hernia and I can't do it, and then they cancel the they cancel, they cancel the summer school. They cancel uh, the summer school, the health unit, uh, and then that's it. So he's out of luck, and, and you're the only it. person that's who cool. would know if you have a hernia or not, right? Now, do you? No actually, so but you're faking. You don't have a hernia. Oh, I do get hernias, but I uh, the, the <laughs> from the bongos. Is that to, sort of the uh, from carrying the bongos? <laughs> we're not playing them. They're very. You got playing. very tired playing them. These look like very yeah. heavy bongos. These are very heavy bongos, and I'll be. I don't. You know, I don't. I don't carry them well. I don't have a. I don't have a good carry. No. Is there uh, some sort of apparatus that you could carry? Uh, like uh, that must. There must be a bongo player magazine that sells these kind of uh, uh, machinery that would make it easier. I'm not to... made of money. I don't have that. I, you know, I can't go. You're just a simple health teacher. I'm just. Yeah, I can't subscribe to Bongo magazine. You're I can't buy a Bongo bag. I'd love to buy a Bongo bag. There's a bag for bongos. Bongo bag. Is this sort of like Santa's sack where you have to drape it over your shoulder? I mean, it seems like it would be more bongos difficult. Bongos are not that large. I bet you could carry them as in like a large backpack. Yeah, and then you're using your back rather than you know you you you. I don't using- got money for a backpack. You don't have money for a Has a student ever left one in your class? I bet there's a lost and found at Marina Del Rey High School full <laughs> yeah. of backpacks. Yeah, sure, but you got to get there real early to be to, to raid the lost and found. That's what they do the it day after. Like you're getting there hours and hours. All the time. Sometimes, and sometimes I'm very late. It happens the day after the last day of school. There's an open season for all the faculty on the lost and found. You got to see this. It's like fucking Walmart on Christmas Day. People go crazy. On Christmas on Day? Christmas day. <laughs> That's you- when that. That's when that's Walmart when, is the craziest. Gets, I don't know. I would think Black Friday. Really crazy. Well, that's the secret shopping day, of course, oh, of Walmart. No. Christmas Day, secret shopping Everything's day. Everything's free. Everything is 90% <laughs> off. And they must have, like, guns and stuff that they've confis- confiscated from students and stuff like that. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. There's yeah. a gun locker, and they, they just open it up on the <laughs> day like after anyone, the last day of school. Hey, take whatever you like. Yeah, guns, knives, brass, knuckles. <laughs> Blackjacks, blackjacks, sure. Uh, other weapons from the forties and fifties. Tear gas cannons. Tommy gun. <laughs> A lot of gas masks. Gas masks. Must, sure. must Why are they gas. confiscating yeah, gas canisters? Gas. Why are they confiscating gas masks? Or is it? Do, does it come in a set with mustard? The gas? assumption is that if you brought a gas mask to school, you know you're going to need it. Number ten. There we go. Bongo versus bongos. Just, it's, and, and if people don't know. Andy actually had bongos that he brought into the studio. Oh yeah, he's playing them, he constantly. Playing them constantly. Yeah. <laughs> also, what you what you might not you you missed in this clip. Classic Charles stopped by. Classic Charles did come by. You are listed as one of the uh, performers on this episode. <laughs> Which I think that bugs people. That bugs people it's because like he wasn't really in it. Because people get excited. They go, a, a Zooks PFT Andy Daly episode? That's great. And then you're just in there for a second doing classic. If you don't know what Classic Charles is, listen to the Comedy Bang Bang DVD commentary that actually is coming out in a week or two or something like is that. Is it really? But only made to order on Amazon, I think. But but it will have extras and everything. It, this will have the, these are the last extras extras they're ever going to commission. (sighs) Unfortunately, they're not commissioning them for uh, season four or five, but I'm doing it myself and I'm going to uh, put them out somewhere down the line myself. Well, there you go. Uh, What's the point of being an eccentric millionaire if you can't pay for your own (laughs) DVD extras? (laughs) Um, but yeah, that was a great, of course, after this clip, it gets demented, uh, when we find that Jimmy Bongos is an entirely different personality from mm-hmm. Joe Bongo right. and, uh, perhaps a, uh, a murderous one at that. <laughs> oh, took its turn. I wasn't expecting, <laughs> but that's a great episode that, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that's, uh, so high. I, I kind of thought it might get, uh, overlooked. It was, that was a really funny episode. Yeah. A I really, really one. funny episode. All right. We have to take, two, uh, two we breaks. We have to take two breaks. <laughs> Me hitting you and you hitting the floor. <laughs> you breaking the floor. 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 <laughs> breaking the floor. Oh, you do a little bit with some doing, Yeah, doing oh, breaking okay. the law. Sure. Parody. Um, <laughs> we need to take two breaks. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. I would love to celebrate the holidays with you, but I'm stuck at home building my website. How many times have you... Heard that and said that. Two separate questions. I'll take my answers off air. Well, building a website, it is tough. Even if you do know your way around coding, creating something that looks good, but also sometimes even more importantly, works well, 
is a time-consuming affair. Well, whether it's for a business site, a portfolio, what else do you have? A restaurant? All you restaurateurs out there listening to the show? All you chefs working in your chef's kitchens? Well, whatever website you have in this day and age, you need one. So why don't you go get one? Lucky for us, Squarespace makes it easy to build beautiful websites without even breaking a sweat. And I can attest to this because if you've gone to ComedyBangBangJokesExplained.com, you can see (laughs) the power of what Squarespace can do. One of the best sites on the net. Well, Squarespace makes it easy. Not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy-to-use tools to create your website with, Squarespace also has state-of-the-art technology. All right? They're not using last year's technology. They're using this year's. And next year, (laughs) they'll use next year's. Believe me. They are powering your site to ensure stability security, and you know you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs when millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust in them too. Seriously, you cannot beat the ease and simplicity of Squarespace. They give you 24-7 online support and beautiful websites. Just go to ComedyBangBangJokesExplained.com and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. So what are you waiting for? Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use this offer code, bang, bang. You're going to get 10% off your first purchase, and you're going to show your support for the show. Thanks, Squarespace. Build it beautiful. <laughs> Comedy bang, bang. We're back here with Paul F. Tompkins. Those are two and good breaks. Sub- and I believe we probably did do two breaks. I bet I'm we not did. sure. I bet we did. Um, welcome back. We are, uh, we've cracked the top 10, uh, and rightfully so. Who better than us? <laughs> We've cracked them. Like, it's a case we had to solve. <laughs> yeah, it was a cold case. <laughs> and who better than us? What are these top ten going to be? we got to <laughs> get this in the black. Scott, I feel like we're like the Sherlock and Watson of cracking the top mm-hmm. ten. Who am I? Who would you like to be? I kind of want to be Sherlock. He's so cool. I think you have to be because you're taller. And he's a heroin addict. <laughs> I thought he was a cocaine addict. Oh, I thought he was a heroin well, as well. Was the 7% solution. Uh, I'm not sure. Which it is cocaine been... and heroin, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. Is the speedball, as they call ball. it. Yeah, oh, wait, the wait, famous wait, wait. Marvel character, speedball. <laughs> Did they ever... <laughs> based on that. No, it wasn't based on that. Cloak and Dagger, though, they were... Uh, they were. Uh, oh, that's right. They, they took in... drugs to get their powers. They were in the inner city. Did they take drugs <laughs> yeah, to get their they powers? Did, yeah, Oh, I thought they were that's like... That's a lot like Limitless, too. I, I want that pill. I want that pill. Give me that pill. Hey, hey, uh, analyze you give this. Give me that pill. Analyze this there's, and that. There's a commercial now for that movie Joy, mm-hmm. uh, where where I guess David O. Russell it's the, is just the Inside like, Out spinoff movie, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David O. Russell is just like, I don't want to have to worry about casting anymore. Just the same people all the time. Same people. Remember, you saw this last year? You're seeing it yeah. again. Now they have different beards and wigs. Yeah, but that's the only difference. Um, but there's a in the trailer, at one point, Robert De Niro's like, I'm proud of you. I got to admit, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud. Is that the very Listen. first? Is that the very first line, I wonder? <laughs> or, I, oh, I hope it is. <laughs> because I don't want to see like someone's emotional arc resolved in the trailer. You know what I mean? You it's, want what if it's like it starts off it with starts off, I'm, I'm proud, proud of you, and, and then like, he learns to not what? be proud. <laughs> yeah, he learns to be ashamed. <laughs> yeah. I'm ashamed of you. I learned. You know what I learned through this process? Give me that pill. Give me that pill. Um, all right, we have to get to <laughs> your next episode on the countdown. Limitless this is making me laugh. <laughs> the idea of it. I'm gonna take a drug and be smart. And that was a TV show, right? Yeah, it's a TV show. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. All right, this is your number nine. Number nine. All right, this is from June 4th. June 4th. This is episode 354. Ooh, 354. What could it be? What could it this be? This is an episode called Solo Bolo Doslo. Oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, let me explain this a little bit. Uh, the Solo Bolo, the first Solo Bolo episode uh, was in our top 10 last year, I believe. And uh, that was uh, Ben Schwartz and I. Usually, you heard from him a little earlier in the countdown. Usually we so do. So don't be a dick. You so heard don't from be him a earlier. Dick. Come you on, know guys. who he is. Come Jesus. on. The voice of BB-8. Come oh, on. Oh, I'm sad. BB-8. I got balls. Beep boop. I got balls. I got balls. He's got the one ball. He's got two balls. He's got a ball on the top of his head. That's not a ball. 
The, you think that's a, a growth? <laughs> this is a ball. Well, because of the shape of it, it's not like a true. It's like a half ball. It's like, it's a, like a growth ball. on a ball. Half ball. It's like if you had that in your testes, if you had a BB-8 in your testes, you'd be like, Doc, cut it out. <laughs> Stop joking around. <laughs> and fix my balls. <laughs> and fix my balls. 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 Um, okay. Why, why, why did they not? They could have. Had me do the voice of BB-8. Yeah, why Ben and not you? Why was that not a perfect audition? Mm-hmm. I'm ball joint. I gotta roll on out of here. Honestly, I think it's the Jews sticking together. If you know what oh, I mean. That you're right. You know what I'm saying, I JJ and Ben. Right. You know JJ what I mean? means Juju Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> Juju. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Ben's real name? Ben Schwartzstein. Oh, he gosh. shortened it to sound less Jewish. Oh my gosh, boy! If I see him again, he's gonna get an earful. Um, of anti-Semitism? Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> From me, the biggest anti-Semite in the world. Um, this is anti-Semite. She's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> what a, it's like Santa Claus where they yeah, he someone takes his name and then they give anti-Semite toys every year. What? <laughs> well, miss when I hear Mrs. Anti-Semite, it's like I was Mrs. Do- Claus. That was the opening to Heart to Heart. Oh, when they got together, it was murder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my boss, Mr. H. He's quite a guy. <laughs> that that was a bold TV move. That was a TV to have show have a secondary from the 80s, character. To have a secondary character, but also to hire a guy who is clearly going to drop dead any moment. <laughs> We're going to make him a major character. Did he drop, drop dead in the middle of the filming? I think he, he made it. It was a coach situation. I think he made it the whole run of Did the he? show. Wow. I think Sometimes so. I think about that when you like, you know, they're like, "Oh my god, we got this amazing actor. He's yeah. 90." Mm, it was like Night a- Court went through two old ladies before they're yeah. like, well, let's get let's someone, get someone young. young. Let's get someone, someone young. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven to went to UTA. UTA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, all right. you know what people said when the Entourage movie came out? Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Mr. Oh, no. Belvedere style. Oh, 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 oh no. no. That came, hey, that was 2015, the year that was. This is best week ever. <laughs> Paul of Tompkins. What was 2015? The, the Entourage, uh, the Entourage movie, movie? Okay, yeah. Mr. Can you Belvedere. believe it? <laughs> Mr. Belvedere, also 2015. The Mr. Belvedere reboot? Mr. Belvedere sitting on his own balls. Freaks on the China. <laughs> they put like a little scratching behind it. So Solo Bolo, what is it? Uh, ben Schwartz, when he is on the show, we usually do a segment before the character comes on of just us riffing. And one day he said, why don't we do the whole show like this? And thus a Solo Bolo was born. How did that happen? Had the first one. How did it happen? The because it was just the two of you. It was just the two of us. Yeah. And was it was it that he suggested it in another episode? In another episode, he should do. He said we should do a whole episode like this and call it a solo bolo. Meanwhile, cut <laughs> to the first solo bolo. I say, and you named it the solo bolo, and he said, no, I didn't. <laughs> now cut to this solo bolo, Doslo, which is the second solo bolo. Yeah. I retell that story, and he's like, oh, did I name it? And then I told the story, and he goes, I don't think I named it. He's like, he can't get a, a, a like a grip on reality. This guy. I think he is detached from reality. He's a maniac. I think he's mentally ill. I think I do believe that he should be in a rubber room. I do believe that he should be oh, in a rubber room. I say, room. I'll say, I'll say. <laughs> um, all right, so solo bolos, basically all, they're, all they are is just me, Ben, trapped in a room, a lot of riffing. <laughs> trapped in a we room. We are trapped. They, it's like a, oh, yeah, no, it's a locked door situation. It's a locked door situation. Oh, yeah, okay. it's a locked room mystery as well. We is tried like, to solve a mystery by the end. Is it like one of those escape rooms? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a long, complicated puzzle that if either of us can solve, we can get out. But instead, we just decide to do a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sing a lot. And um, this w- particular solo bo- bolo doslo uh, goes off the rails immediately <laughs> within the first few minutes mm-hmm. with the second of two word stumbles I made uh, in episodes this year, which turned into T-shirts. So this was the second of these, and you'll hear it. Uh, oh, this was this is the second. This is the second I this one. This was first. The uh, it was. You're right. Yeah, it was the yeah! first one. Oh yeah, baking a plain cake. Baking a plain cake. cake. All right. Uh, this was the first one. You're right. So we made a t-shirt out of this. Uh, you'll hear it, uh, right from, uh, the jump here. It's one of the first things that happens. Here we are. This is your number nine. Number nine. Let's get ready to rumble. 
Oh, no. I'll joke he's out. A, sal- <laughs> a salad. <laughs> I'll joke I'll joke a, salad. a salad. Oh, a new t-shirt. A new t-shirt was born. And in this moment, a new t-shirt was born. All I'll joking joke a salad. salad. And then it just has a picture of a salad. <laughs> the last thing you see for John Ralphio is he fakes his own death. Yes, of course. And then, uh, <laughs> of course, of course, fakes his does. own death. And then um, he starts a casino in Tajikistan. Yes. The the um, Parks and Rec gave me a, like a rap. They gave people rap gifts and they they found. Oh, that sounds so nice. They're very you. nice, and they found some extra ones because I'm not main cast. And they're and they're like, we actually have some for you. And so a person came by to drop it Who off. Who is this person? This person, I believe, was Mike Schur's assistant. And what is Mike Schur's assistant's name? You know what? I don't know. You, you know what? I don't know ask if it was. A person drops a present off for you? And you oh, at the time I did. I invited her inside and everything. Oh, really? How yeah. long did she stay? Probably two days. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you do to this woman? Oh, God. Can, Can I see what I basement? do when I get a woman myself? Okay. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, this is CBB After Dark. Here we go. Okay. All right, Benny's going to tell us what he does to a woman. What I do, uh-huh. try to get a woman in my place, try to lock that door real quick uh-huh. so she can't uh-huh. get away, right? And then Scott, pretend you're the girl. I'll be like, hey, baby, how are you? Hi, baby. I love you. I'm Pox and Rick. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what do you want to do to me? <laughs> Wait, first of all, how old are you? I'm two. I'm this many. <laughs> two? I'm this many. Oh, baby, you know I like them young. Oh, Ooh, baby, I like them young. Oh, baby, I like them young. My name's Maggie Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. We're back. Solo Bolo call We're back, call baby. Back. Solo Bolo call back. Everybody saying it again. Benny Schwab. Oh, tan roof. Rusted. Get it fixed. Seriously. So um, she she comes by and she gives me the little bag of trinkets for the thing and she goes uh actually it was a lot of really it was um I believe Cufflinks? No, Nick Offerman at, in his wood shop made a um uh he, out of a piece of wood he carved something that looked like uh Indiana and then he stamped where Pawnee would have been on it and in the back it said from the crew or from the cast or whatever. It's kind of interesting, don't you think that that Chris Pratt he spends so much time in Indiana, but he's signing up to spend more time in Indiana? I'm sorry? Jones, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that, why is the Hollywood Reporter Jones, not, that is. not making mention of this? That's a great... By the way, do you stop doing headlines? Let me get... Wait, first, let me tell you the prop. Then I want to play our uh, headline I game. would send in headlines so many times to okay. Jay Leno. I'm going to give you news right. news items, and you're going to give okay. me a headline for them. Okay. We'll so, go back and forth. Meaning meaning what? I'm uh, going to give you the story, and you give me like the New York Post version of that okay. headline. Because right, that was go. a great one. In, right. Indiana, Indiana goes back. All but right. So they come by, yeah. and she goes, there's one more thing, Mike. Uh, there's one more Mike, thing. Mike, Doug, and Morgan what? wanted you to have. <laughs> she took off her beautiful breasts. Really sweet girl. Uh, no, and so she goes, it's in the trunk. Will you help me get oh, it out? Oh, it's in the trunk, is and it? And I was like, okay. And we take out the gravestone of John Ralphio. Ah! And she goes, they go, they go, they wanted you to have it. They don't like, what are they going to do with it? They don't need it, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, amazing. So in my uh, in my apartment, which is not very huge, right. I have uh, the tombstone of John Ralphio. And by the way, it was it was special effects, so it's actually like eight feet tall, right? It's eight feet tall, yeah. Yeah, they so made it like a giant. J- a lot of real estate Yeah, in I had to take out my fucking ceiling. Yeah. Okay, this is the story. I'm going to give you a story. Here we go. And then you give me the funny headline. All right. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Um, inside of a zoo one day, yep. all the monkeys got out of their cages yep. and ate all the food and okay. all the pedestrians ran away. Okay. What's the headline? Uh, bananas no longer. Slippery pedestrians slip on out of zoo. <laughs> okay, so I made a mistake. You're terrible at this. <laughs> you well, got lucky. What? This is my first attempt huge, at it. That's a huge headline. Oh, you're so good Give at me it? anyone. Give me a different anyone? story. All right, here we go. Watch this. Uh, Engineer Sam, get off your phone. You can only hear this. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, at the airport. Uh, Already got a great one. Keep going. All right. Uh, plane takes off and crashes into the <laughs> Pentagon. <laughs> Just shy, just shy. <laughs> no, I will no? not do that. Not well, there's do that. No, none of your funny headlines <laughs> you're so good at. No, yeah, man. I didn't think so. I said a couple of monkeys came out of their cages. What about a traitor? A traitor publishes no. No. secrets no. Onto, onto WikiLeaks and flees to Russia, America's biggest traitor. Make a funny headline out of that. Sure. Uh... Uh, snowed in. Kids are no longer snowed in. I was just going to say. Go, the Olympic challenge. All right. The Olympic music challenge. 
One of us starts to sing a song. It can be any song. Doesn't real have, song? Doesn't have to be real song. These all have to be real songs. Doesn't have to be from a musical. It can be a it can be a pop song. It can be a musical song. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. The other person tries to join along, and at the at the natural conclusion of the other person's song, the Start other person new song. has to has to segue seamlessly into a new song. I love this. And whoever doesn't, stops. Whoever, whoever stops, loses whoever the line, can't think of another song. And if you don't know the words exactly, try to keep. That's up. fine. It's fine. Not knowing the words, just I basically all it is is just trying to. Think is this of the first songs. time you ever played this? This is the first time we've ever. Can done we it. name it after Solo Bolo? Okay, let's call it Solo Bolo Olympic Song Challenge. Great. All right, here we go. It's time for Solo Bolo Olympic, Olympic Song, Song Challenge. Challenge, starring Scott Ackerman and thank you, and Benny Schwa. Thank there you so much for saying who's starring in it, because a lot of times we don't do that. For of the course, yeah. yeah. Well, when this is on the best of, I want people to know. <laughs> okay, good. Here we go. <laughs> so, do you want to start with a song, and I'll, uh, or should I start? Yes, with I'll start with a song. Ready? Okay, here we go. Can you feel Ooh. the love tonight? tonight. Can you feel? It has to be a little more than that. Oh, I'm got, sorry. That's good. Uh, uh, I, I feel like we should. It, it, it can't okay, go right that, here we go. It can't go that quickly. Hakuna right Matata. What a wonderful Ooh. phrase. Hakuna Matata. Ain't no passing craze. It means no worries for the rest of your days. Kuna Matata. Do 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 do. Maybe far away, or maybe real nearby. He'll be pouring her coffee. She'll be straightening his tie. Maybe I should love in him. a house, or maybe by a hill. He'll be eating egg salad. She'll be writing her will. Maybe they're this is just a song. smart. Maybe they're cool. <laughs> Maybe they went to private school. Somewhere over the rainbow. Well, up high, there's a land that I dream of once in a lullaby. Feed the birds, top in a bag, <laughs> top in a Chim chimini chim chimini chim chim jiru. Super kala fragilistic makes me yellow doges. Then I know it's yellow doges. Then I know it's yellow doges. Super kala fragilistic makes me yellow doges. Hum the little hum the lie. Hum the little hum the lie. Hum the little hum the lie. Hum the little. I got a feeling. That tonight's gonna be a good night. I got a feeling. That tonight's gonna be a you go a real good night, and I feel like going home. Do do do. I'm on my way. I am going home. Home is where. I'm just about to go. I shot the sheriff, <laughs> but I did not shoot the deputy. But ding, no, ding, no. Ding. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. But don't worry. But don't much. Be happy. Be happy. Be, do, 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 Everybody bring singing. Bring it back to Hakuna Matata. Do, bring it. Do, do, Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Uh, very nice. That's, and that is 
That is uh, uh, one of the best ways to get full circle that I've ever heard. That is that's that is like, an improv game. Yeah, that's like wow, it's that's a, amazing. It's an improv game. We as long, long as you ago. always start on Hakuna Matata and end on Don't Worry, Be Happy, <laughs> you're gonna be fine. Yeah, you're okay. Whatever you sing in the middle, it doesn't matter. Number nine. Well, there it is, and he predicted it. The solo bolo Olympic song challenge was in the best of. I think he and, was kidding when he said it. And the the t shirt. I don't think he was kidding when he said it. I think he was. I he de- hearing it back. I think he was kidding. Like, oh boy, yeah, because we were about to do it. He's like, oh yeah, I just want to know what it's called when it's in the best of. I think he's doing that on purpose. Yeah, maybe so. But yeah, the t shirt, of course, is all joking a salad. Now, he made the t shirts. I like to imagine someone wearing that t shirt. And explaining it to someone else. <laughs> yes. I don't know that. I don't know. I, I'm imagining someone has to have explained. If you have explained it to someone, please write their reaction to us and send it to us on Twitter and say, yeah, I explained it. Oh, uh, let me write the reaction. Blank, blank stare. stare. <laughs> yeah. Very simple. <laughs> yep, there Save you some keyboard clicks. <laughs> All right. We uh, have to get to our next uh, episode we on the countdown. To, Here it is. This is your number eight. Number eight. All right, BB eight. BB eight. <laughs> this is episode three hundred and seventy-seven. <clears throat> this is, I believe, no, this is not our latest episode in the countdown. Uh, this is September twenty-one. Mm, pretty close, though. Um, and do you remember what you were doing in September, and w- perhaps what this episode Let's could be? See. September. What happens in September every year? Back to school. Back to school, of course. But once those kitties are off to school, we can enjoy the Emmys. That's right. That, and we do. And we do every year. And the kids are at school so the grown-ups can watch the Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> Go off to school, young lad. I need to watch a four-hour show about television. Um, but when the Emmys come around, quite often we are blessed with people who are coming into town just for the Emmys and they want to do an episode of the show. Scott, you're absolutely right. And this, I think I know which episode this is going to be. This year was no exception because this is an episode called Good Night in the Morning. Oh, yes it is. Your episode number eight. All right, Tatiana Maslani and Christian Brune from Orphan Black. Mm-hmm. They are both big fans of the show. Mm-hmm. They listen to it every week, uh, from what I understand. They tweet about it constantly. I did not I did not know this. I'd been watching Orphan Black and was like, oh, wow, uh, those guys are awesome. Yeah. And then suddenly started receiving tweets from them. <laughs> right. I'm like, I think they listen to the show or something. <laughs> And then they were constantly tweeting about it for a while. And they were like, you know, retweeting us whenever we would tweet about the show. And right. it was, it was, uh, and we, we slowly started to realize that they were fans. I met them both when they came to the San Diego Comic Con show that mm-hmm. we did, that's in the Howl app right now, um, with that we did with uh, Taryn Killam and uh, uh, some other people. Derek Waters. Derek Waters. And uh, also, who else was there? Me. You. That's right. Were you? Is that really who you were blanking on? <laughs> you were like picturing four people on stage. You're like, uh, Darren Gillen. I've Dirk done a hundred episodes me. this year. I can't remember the details of them all. Well, no, Scott. I was getting confused with the outside lands one. Quite mm-hmm. honestly, I kept going. It was John Gabriel quite Sarah? honestly. So we both met them at the San Diego Comic Con show. And what did they come dressed as? They came dressed as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Full because, costume and masks. Full costume and masks. They they uh, they assumed, because it was at Comic-Con, that there would be people in costumes there at the theater. Mm-hmm. This was a little off-site. This was away from, this was maybe five miles away from the convention yes, it center. Was, yes, And it was mainly San Diego locals, I, I believe, yeah. were at the show. Not tied into Comic-Con in any way. They were the only people dressed up. Yeah. And you and I really encouraged them to come without telling them that. But I wondered if they also had those costumes because they wanted to be able to walk around I think unnoticed. They, I think they did, but also... Because they would have been mobbed. Maybe, on, on although I think they took off the masks at, at a certain point. Oh, they would have been mobbed on the Comic-Con floor, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they came as Ninja Turtles. We took pictures with them. We talked to them. We saw them the next day. Lovely people. I didn't see them that night, though. You didn't see I, them? Oh. I didn't meet them until... The next day. Oh, okay. You met them the next day at Comic-Con. I met them the next day at Comic-Con in some, it was like some weird holding area where I was there with the Thrilling Adventure Hour and we did some signings and we did like 
there's this this whirlwind photo thing where mm-hmm. they have in this in this uh, this suite of rooms. Right. They have different t- photographers for different media outlets or Nothing whatever. Nothing that I've been invited to, but uh, so, you're really painting a picture. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't understand that. <laughs> um, but they, you are just kind of sh- taken from one room to another, right. and you very quickly take a bunch of pictures, and then, <laughs> and then that's it. Mr. Tompkins. Mr. Tompkins. So, <laughs> no one is doing that. <laughs> the, oh, look by here. the way. Look here, Mr. Tompkins. The photographers are all like, I don't know who the fuck these people are. I'll find out later. Why am? Why are you waste? Why are you making me do That's this? That's how I feel when I do. <laughs> I I I am encouraged to walk red carpets a lot these days. There to, is. It's humiliating. It's humiliating because you see the person going up and whispering in their ear. This yeah. is Scott Ackerman comedy. Bang bang. They write it down to take a note of it, and then I imagine the minute I walk past them, they go delete, 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 delete <laughs> of all of their pictures. No, I th- I honestly think they're like. All right, I guess I'll hold on to this. If I find out this person is somebody, right. <laughs> then they, you never are. Right. But it, it is, I've like seen people put cameras down. <laughs> it's mortifying. <laughs> cameras down, everyone. It's Tompkins mortifying. is here. Oh, we don't have to worry about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but so, in, in, so there's this room in between where you can hang out. The in-between room. Yeah, of course. And you can hang out there and have as many Red Bulls and kind bars as you want. Oh, boy. And uh, so that's where I met. Tatiana and, and, and Christian. Christian, they, uh, like I turn around and they were walking towards me and they, it was adorable. They had the biggest smiles on their faces. Mm-hmm. Like it was as if we were pen pals and we had been <laughs> corresponding. We're finally meeting for the first time in person. Except it had been one-sided in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, we, oh, watch, yeah. we watch Orphan Black. Yeah. But- I had seen the show, but I, right. I, I had never talked to them in any way. Right. Maybe once on like that weekend right. Right. on Twitter or something, they were the sweetest people and they were clearly yeah. like huge comedy fans. Yeah. So it's Canadian. And- Canadian, Canadians. That's the, that's the only thing that explains. There's it. there's such a well, honestly, I, I really do think that's what it is because there's such a strong, there's such a strong comedic sensibility in Canada because they're a big country with a relatively small population, right. and their comedy scene is insanely strong right. for the amount of people that populate their country. They, they love to laugh. They love to they, laugh. They got nothing better to do. Up but there, they too. Pr- they produce great comedy, but also I think they produce great comedy fans. Yes. And we've we found that out when we went up to Toronto recently. Yes. Not recently, but a year a uh, yeah. year or so ago. And hopefully we will be back very soon. And those guys are both very funny in their own right. Because mm-hmm. and their storyline because Tatiana obviously plays a million characters. She on plays the show. A, yeah, if you do, if you've not watched Orphan Black, you really should. It's uh tour de force from her. And Christian does pretty well too. Hi Christian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean he he, he I, only plays one guy. Yes. You know, uh, she plays like 12 different people and they're all wildly different. Yeah. Um, but the character she plays with Christian is the is I think kind of you could say that's the comic relief. Yeah, she's of the, the show. uptight uh, housewife, suburban housewife yeah. who uh, was in a musical that and mu- uh, oh, that musical the musical was, was so, so good. Yeah, so uh, like they have a lot of fun together because she's yeah. playing the comic relief character and he's sort of playing the comic relief character. Although yeah. you know, you know, he still has uh, a lot of stuff going on. It's Don't want to spoil dark. anything. It's a little dark. Don't want to spoil anything. I want but that pill. Ch- I want that pill. <laughs> We will spoil that he wants the pill. That's the one thing we will spoil. He does want the pill. He does want it. (laughs) But, um, so anyway, so uh, when the Emmys came around, they work in Toronto. That's where they they film Orphan Black. When the Emmys came around, um, I had been hearing, oh, yeah, uh, they're big fans or through the publicist, oh, they'd like to do the show at some point or something. Uh, When the Emmys came around, you have to understand, when you are an Emmy-nominated actress, uh, and you are coming into town just for the Emmys, your schedule is packed. Yes. They pack it with as much promo as possible uh, in order to capitalize on the availability of being there, and they're trying to get your name out there as much as possible in order to maybe garner a win or at least just garner publicity for the show. And so uh, these guys did not have time to do this, one would think. (laughs) They put aside two hours of their day (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they and as they told uh, their publicist, who's a good friend of mine, uh, it, it was something they really, really wanted to do. So they absolutely made time for it. Mm-hmm. And um, so this was uh, this was the episode we uh, I, they were uh, big fans. And I, by the way, I'd first heard that Tatiana was such a big fan when she met Lauren Lapkus at a SAG Awards thing, I think, mm-hmm. um, when uh, Lauren had said hi to Andy Samberg and they did the episode where they where we all did the Hollywood facts theme over and over and yes. over again. Yes. And Tatiana made a beeline for them and started doing the Hollywood facts theme to them. <laughs> <laughs> so Lauren wrote to me and said, hey... 
Tatiana <laughs> Maslany is a big fan of the show. So that's where I first heard about it. So I knew I had to get Lauren. I knew I had to get you. And uh, so this is an episode called Good Night in the Morning. Oh, we haven't even gotten to the clip yet? No, we haven't done the clip yet. <laughs> Sorry. You you and Lauren hadn't really decided what you were going to do before the episode. Not right? at all. Not we I I don't either, neither of or, us had, nor did you think you were going to do it together. No, we did not have a we did not have separate plans of of characters to do and um, But you were living separate lives. At, yeah. Yeah. You, you had have no, no right, right to ask me, me how I feel. You have no right. This is the perfect key for this song. <laughs> oh, man. The lowest <laughs> version. You, you, you got the, no right. You want the maximum drama of the song. <laughs> you have no right to ask me how I feel. <laughs> you got no right <laughs> to speak which, to me so which kind. Is, which is funnier, starting too high or starting too low? Because I think starting too low is under. Underrated. <laughs> it really I think is. it's underrated. We both were like, oh boy, should have taken that up uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Jeremy Piven. Um, so we it was right before right before we started recording. And I said, Do you want to do something together? And she said, sure. And I said, What should we be? And she said, Let's be morning DJs. And that was it. That was that was the that was the only preparation that we morning did. DJs and I think you said what your names were they ended up being Chasmin that's you <laughs> Chasmin and Sunny and Sunny that's right uh, we talked to you guys for a while um, for and a you, while you changed your voice uh, midway yes because I started doing it there was a thing in my head that I was going for but yeah. when it came out because I wanted to do like, like cheesy morning DJs yeah well there's there's of. a certain type of voice where these guys sound like they really sound hoarse and raw like right. they've been doing coke all night right. and then they have this morning D radio show right and it was not coming out right and it sounded way too much like, like Tom like Likas. Tom Likas. James like James and Tom, Tom Likas. Likas. and so I, I so to your it was, credit you switched it up it was all I could think about it was right. like this isn't this isn't what I wanted do. This yeah. So I'm at one, at, at maybe ten minutes in, you you cleared your throat, yeah. <clears throat> and you then you did your uh, the voice. Just a it more ended generic up sounding voice. I but it was great. It's Look how fine. high it is. It's, it's number fine. eight. No, I I think the things that we were saying was funny. I if I had had more time to prepare, I probably would have done a more specific voice. Sure, but hey, you beggars can't be choosers. No, and I was you begging. are all beggars. No one will let me choose. <laughs> so uh, we we talked to Chasmin and Sonny for a while, and then their producer Scarsdale came in, and this is. <laughs> Your number eight. Number eight. Um. So. <laughs> good night. Go good morning. Is it is it called good night in the morning because you wrap up at night? Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's called good night in the morning because uh. the show starts in the morning. Sure. It well. goes all goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> then at nighttime. Uh, someone puts uh, a cover over us so <laughs> we, we know it's time to go to sleep in our cage. And pour some NyQuil. Yeah. Into we do the show in a shots giant of cage. We drink okay. shots Curtain of NyQuil. over. <laughs> Good night. That's right. Who I puts this ca carpet over you? Or our, this rug or whatever. Uh, our, blanket. No one ever said it was a carpet or a rug. <laughs> blanket is a little bit closer. But I know that there's a there's a language difference because we're from different countries. Sorry, we call blankets carpets. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> like your security carpet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Linus. <laughs> uh, what, what, the, what was the question? Oh, who, who does it? Who it's does uh, it's our producer, Scarsdale. <laughs> is Scarsdale here? <laughs> so yeah. Of course he is. He's always with us all he the time. He lingers. Bring him in here. I should say. All right. <laughs> here comes Scarsdale. Hello. Oh. Hi, Scarsdale. Hello. Hello. I, I am, am Scarsdale. Scarsdale. You have an interesting Ooh. phenomenon going on with your voice here. Oh, oh really? really? What, what do, do you, you think, think my, my voice, voice sounds like? like? It sounds like two people are talking at the same time. Do you have two <laughs> tracheas and, and larynxes? <laughs> do I have two tracheas and larynxes? No. <laughs> well, then what accounts for this strange phenomenon I'm hearing? Uh, I, I just, just sound, sound like, like me, me to do me. me. <laughs> I well, wow, it's it's you know I've heard of people with six octave voices, but you're literally speaking I think two octaves in two totally separate octaves. Oh, you, you know, know what, what it is? is. I'm, I'm Tibetan. Tibetan. Oh, I see. You're like breathing in while you're breathing out, and that's singing. right. I'm, I'm doing, doing that all, all the time. time. Okay, very good, Scarsdale. Uh, how did you meet these two? How, how did, did I meet these? Sunny? <laughs> It's interesting because occasionally, and very rarely, I have to say, 
You sound as if your two voices are not saying the the word that the other voice is saying. Well, well I, don't I don't know, know what, what you're, you're talking, talking about, about in the, the first place, place well, so I don't, I don't know, know why it would sound. <laughs> <laughs> your Tibetan breathing sort of lapsed there for a second. These guy, this guy, uh, Scarsdale. <laughs> He's quite a character. No, we he's make so fun annoying. of him. We make fun of him all the time on we the show. We hate him. We how can't did, stand him. Get hooked up with this guy. Oh, he followed us home. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we were leaving the studio the first day we did the show without a producer, <laughs> and uh, I remember I remember walking home to the to the <laughs> to the home we share. Well, we don't. We're not married, but we're we not are married. roommates. We are. We've been did you call him husband for earlier? Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> okay. I didn't say that. No, I don't think. I Sounded. actually think she did not say that. Oh, okay. It sounded I didn't. Like... I know I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, Good night. Good night. Morning. So he followed you home, and the rest is history. Yes. Well, yeah, he follows over. You're not curious. As <laughs> well, to I am. Anything about it seemed that. like you were moving on. No, no, it seemed like you were done with hearing this story. No, I'm never done with history. hearing your story. <laughs> the rest, uh, however, uh, 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 to to address your comment, the rest is indeed history. Okay. Um, Everything is. But yeah, Scarsdale followed us home, and uh, we what were said, you thinking, Scarsdale? Why why follow these two home? I, I wanted, wanted to, to break into, into the radio, radio business. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> so you wanted to break into the radio business. So then, uh, Sonny, what? I mean, you see a. Uh, I thought he was going to say I wanted to break into their into their home. <laughs> That's what I thought he was going to say. I thought he sounded like that little guy from Twin Peaks. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rewind? Is that his name? Re- Re- that's right. <laughs> Little Rewind from Twin Peaks. Obi makes it to the the new episodes that are coming to Showtime. Showtime. Somebody stop me. Dino Mike. <laughs> um, so we followed Did you Did I home. do that? <laughs> you got it, dude. <laughs> Not the mama. What was your question? <laughs> followed you home and then... Broke into the house or just stood we, outside? We leave the door ajar because uh, we're both very afraid of suffocating in our own home. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, it I seems like you'd be more sleep. afraid of burglars or a home invasion. I would I would rather be strangled in my sleep by a burglar <laughs> than suffocate because I left the door closed. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about it, Sonny. The same. You know that. <laughs> ah, that was a trick question. Razzle dazzle. <laughs> Well, I know these guys. I mean, uh, have you guys uh, heard these these guys? I mean, are you in Canada? Do you know? Is your show uh, broadcast? I think Canada? we're in some, some provinces. provinces. <laughs> Saskatchewan, probably Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan oh, and the northern provinces. Yeah. the territories, if you will. Oh, mm-hmm. you guys are big. Do you guys make oh, fun good. of those places? Is that like Saskatchewan? Is that like a? Funny well, I mean, joke I grew up there. Oh, yeah. So I can careful. do it. Oh, okay. I can make. Fun I believe of that the place everyone makes fun of is Newfoundland. That's yeah. where all the dum dums are. <laughs> oh. Is that true, Tatiana? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it because they named their place the most obvious name? We knew founded this place. <laughs> it was a real placeholder name <laughs> that they never got around to filling in. So, uh, you guys are, are uh, I'm reading some of your press materials here. Oh, good. Oh, we, those got sent over finally. Finally, yes. I, I admit I didn't know anything about you before you got in here. Thanks but. a lot, Thanks Scarsdale. Thanks for studying. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> But uh, uh, you guys have, uh, you've been on the air for 40 years. You're about to go into your 41st season. <laughs> That's and, right. Uh, you've been on since 1965, which yes. is an amazing run. Ugh. Don't remind me. My feet are tired. <laughs> Wait, and you stay. <laughs> from that, that amazing run. <laughs> And you guys do marathons every day. That's right. Every single day. Before you tape the show. We run a marathon. 6.02 p.m. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Wait, after the show we do it? Yep. Well, it's before the next it day show. It goes into the before next Before the next day show. That's Why are you unsure? Yes, I have Tatiana. a timeline question. Yes, sure. You absolutely. said you've been doing this for 40 years. Uh-huh. That's correct. You said you started in 1965. That's right. Yeah. Was there a hiatus period of 10 years where you didn't, where you didn't, where you weren't on the air? Oh, that's uh, it is a I good mean, question <laughs> because the math is not adding it's up. Not, it's not adding up. And people have we, been driven crazy by this. Here's what They've we do. I always we do, wondered what were those dark days. Wow. Yeah, we do a, a we do a year on, a year up. off. <laughs> um, sometimes we'll take two years off at a time. Sometimes uh, sometimes we'll spend a whole year running oh, wait, a marathon. So, so. I sleep in a casket. <laughs> Well, then I would think that you would be very afraid of suffocation because of that casket. It's not because, open. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's an open casket. Out of respect for the family. I have a baboon heart. 
But are you doing these marathons with sheets over you? Because yes, of course you. we are. Yeah, okay. yes, we are. So. But with high holes cut out. No, yeah. A lot of people think we're ghosts. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> For these nighttime marathons. Yeah, we're running. <laughs> <laughs> we have sheets over our heads. Unsanctioned. With high holes. These they are, are not real marathons. marathons. <laughs> they are not. The city does not does not support these. How long are these supposed marathons? Then? <laughs> well, they're they're the traditional marathon <laughs> length. Twenty six point two point miles. Something miles. Okay. And then, Ten uh, hours. Scarsdale is there by the side of the road with uh, cups of water for us to pour over our sheets. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing like a wet sheet contest as well? Well, it turns into a wet sheet contest. And I every year it's, it's every year Sunny wins. <laughs> Wait, it's every, it's yearly. <laughs> we we do it. You do the the races daily. We do races daily. We do the wet <laughs> So it's sort of cumulative. <laughs> You, you tally up the points at the end of the race That's exactly and at right. the end of the year. That's whoever. exactly right. Then okay. we have a big banquet where we award medals. <laughs> <laughs> so some days you're winning, some days Sonny is winning. No, Sonny always wins. Oh, every single day? Every single day. Oh, okay. But Scarsdale never races with you guys at all? Scarsdale, ne- Scarsdale he can't run. He can't run. Oh. He's got terrible knees. Oh, They're I'm made so of wood. <laughs> Were they replaced or were you born that way? that way? He was born that way. Like Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga. <laughs> exactly. That's what her song's about. That's oh. right. Lady Gaga, we, we play a lot of Lady Gaga on our show. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that, we talk over it. We but. talk We talk <laughs> over every single song. <laughs> um, oh. Fantastic. Scarsdale, you were born with, with wooden knees. Are you? Was, yes. Uh, who are your parents? What do you mean, who? <laughs> Scarsdale's got to collect himself. He seems to be having a little bit of... It's a very emotional topic for him. What do you, what do you mean, mean, who are my parents? parents? Obviously, my, my parents. father. <laughs> Scarsdale, get a hold of yourself. My father was Geppetto, and my mother was Tinkerbell. Oh, so t- from, from two different Disney classics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what yeah, he said. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. Great, great, great. So they opened up the Disney vault and those two got together. They and... boinked, as we say. In the vault, I think. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you know who watched Song of the South? <laughs> Never coming out of that vault. <laughs> Never coming out. <laughs> He's got nothing else to do in that vault. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, we used to sleep in a vault. Yeah, really? that got yeah. tight. Once we started making money. I think that's what we developed the claustrophobia as well. Maybe a little. I love sleeping next to you. I love sleeping next to you, Sonny. My partner in business, whom I am not married to. Have you guys ever dated outside of this relationship? I mean, obviously, yeah. not dating, oh, I'm married. Like, you're, oh, you are married. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who are you married to? <laughs> Phil Collins. Ever heard of him? <laughs> well, the singer? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. In the air tonight? and Yeah, he's there. <laughs> Every night. So he's he's sleeping next to you uh, then. No, Jasmine? he tours a no, lot. He tours yeah. a lot. So okay. that's it's good for Sonny to have someone to sleep next. When to. you say tours, I know he's not touring with musically anymore. No, he, he just gave goes that on up. safaris. And right. <laughs> okay. He's doing a lot of lectures where he uh, shows the movie Buster and then uh, he uh, talks about it. Sort of live uh, live action commentary that he mm, does. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> and uh, where did you meet Phil Collins? It's so interesting. Um, take a while. Wild guess. Okay. <laughs> Live Aid. Yeah. Were you on the Concord? The obvious I answer. I thought I had AIDS. I showed up. <laughs> Wait. Okay. This is an interesting story. You suddenly had an AIDS scare that lasted, I'm going to say, a good 10 years. And so you thought the best place to get it cured was Live Aid? <laughs> I, kept saying, I thought it was Liv. I kept saying, Sonny, you got to do something. <laughs> And she saw, she saw a story in the paper about this concert, Live oh. AIDS. And she said, that's got to be the answer. So you went. You see, Very Phil, disappointed. You see, Phil, is this in Philadelphia or is this in London? Wherever it was. It was in both cities. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in Philadelphia, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm American. Okay, so uh, you see Phil Collins. You think you have AIDS. Yeah. What do you say to him? Help me, doctor. <laughs> You think he's a doctor because he's bald. He can't possibly be a pop star. Well, to be fair, he was wearing a lab coat at the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> His he... signature backstage look. It <laughs> right. would come off right as soon as, he, as soon as the lights hit him on stage, he'd throw the lab coat off. Well, his parents always wanted him to go into the medical industry. And this oh. was kind of a fuck you to them. <laughs> okay. So uh, you start dating Phil Collins. Oh, that's uh, a nice word. 
Oh, okay. So you started having sex with them immediately? Yeah. They, but, began, they began a sexual relationship almost immediately. <laughs> um, and, and this was this is very generous of Phil Collins' part. Still not sure that Sonny does not have acquired immune deficiency First syndrome. First thing I told him was that I had AIDS. Next thing I told him was, fuck me harder. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> Bill Collins is a, is a real adventurer. <laughs> real adventuresome spirit, but yes. you know, that's the rock and roll lifestyle. That's right. Certainly. I, of course, am a widower. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. To whom were you married? A woman with AIDS who died. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I mean, that's what she told me. She oh, left She left a note saying, Dear Jasmine, when you read this, I'm dead from AIDS. <laughs> and you've never seen her again? Never seen Well, she's dead. What was her name? Her name was Bellissima. <laughs> Bellissima? Yeah. Oh, she sounds beautiful. She was. Yeah. What? Uh, describe her for me, if you could. She was four feet tall. She had... <laughs> Five foot long hair. <laughs> oh wow! Beautiful, like Crystal Gale, but oh. one better. Um, it was like hey. She had a beautiful blue eye. Uh, <laughs> Just one, or well, I, I can see. I she had the see bluest one, eye. I could see one through there. She was a huge Toni Morrison fan, uh. um, and uh, she had a she had a wonderful singing voice. She used to sing to me every night. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. What would she sing to you? She would sing the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Only public domain songs. That's right. Mm. Would she give you an acronym? Like, was it an acronym? Yeah, she, she would. <laughs> she would sing the alphabet. Then she would tell me what the alphabet stood for. Oh, right. let's hear a little oh, bit of it if you. Oh, remember. sure. That's beautiful. Well, the song, the song you probably know. Sure, but I'd love to hear it. <laughs> would you really? I really would. You'd love to hear it's the It's my alphabet? favorite song. Oh, okay. Uh, it, goes, it goes a little something like this. A, B, C, D, E, G, H, J, G, yours, two, E, V, J, V, H, Y, Z. I love that. Oh, it's a beautiful so beautiful. Song. Such a beautiful, a beautiful melody. Song. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fastest rendition I've ever heard. <laughs> That's how she, well, we were trying to go to sleep. So uh, I would I would demand that she sing to me every night. And then she said, hey, I've worked up a new arrangement for the alphabet song. Maybe you'd like this one. Yeah. And then yeah. she would hit me with that. And uh, mm. wow. boy, I have fond memories. Fond memories. Every time I hear the alphabet, I remember my dead wife. Uh, so anything in the alphabet? So anytime anyone speaks? <laughs> Well, one time somebody says letters. <laughs> okay. Oh, so oh, okay. So was watching Happy forward. Days very very difficult for you? Because they would sing Monday, Tuesday, no. and Happy Days. <laughs> no, because he he would say A all the time. Oh, the character of Fonzie was very cool. <laughs> Yes, and of course, anytime anyone on anything says you, right, when they address course, someone yeah. in the second person. I would imagine going to see B-Movie was just a terrible experience for you. <laughs> yeah, but not for that reason. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a straight-up classic joke structure. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Oh, great clip, huh? That was, that was a really fun day. That was such... It, Sunday everyone, fun day. Everyone was... It was a Sunday. <laughs> we had a fun day. Mm-hmm. Wines Day Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Two Thir for Tuesday. Thirsty Thursday. Throwback Thursday as well. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, TGIF. Oh, TGIF. Oh, redum. Oh, TGIF. TGIF. <laughs> Respect, TGIF. Uh, later on in that episode, you should go back and listen to it. Uh, Tatiana jumps in and plays Bellissima. Yes. Uh, Chasman's wife. And uh, Christian played Phil Collins. Yeah. So, Sonny's husband. Yes. Sonny's estranged husband. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is one of the only episodes of the show that I've listened to twice. Really? Yes. Thanks a lot, I guess. All right. Let's go to <laughs> Weird Slam. It wasn't a slam. What are you talking <laughs> about? Why should you even listen to the once? I don't have fucking time to go back and listen to all this shit more than once. I listened to it once. <laughs> you were there in the once. That's yes, the thing. I, I didn't have to listen to it ever again. I, that's how I feel. I In making these clips, I hear these episodes for the first time since we actually You have them. no oh, right, right to say, say that's, that's how, how I feel. feel. Um, all That's right. the sweet spot right We there. need to go to a break. When we come back, we will have your number seven. <laughs> do you love books? The end. No. Do you love books, but you find you don't have time to read them? Well, that's my problem. I'm, I'm too busy living a life that they'll write about in books. Am I right, folks? Eh, maybe not. Well, anyway, Audible.com has the perfect solution to this age-old problem. It's a newish solution. Go get audiobooks and listen to the books you've been meaning to read while you're on the go. 
at the gym, during your commute, when your wife is talking to you. Audible.com provides over 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. Their app is free. It works on iPhones, iPad, I don't know anymore, Android, Windows phones. You can also download and listen on your Kindle Fire and over 500 MP3 players. And unlike a streaming or a rental service with Audible, ya own ya books. Ya own ya books. All right? So you can, ya can access your ya books anytime and anywhere right from ya smartphone. Audible.com also has this great listen guarantee. If you decide, you know what? This book is not for me. I heard great things about it. Not enjoying it. Hey, guess what? No problem. Exchange any book you're not happy with for another title. Any times. No questions asked. I mean, they may ask you what other title do you want. But that's the kind of question that it's okay for them to. Anyway, just go do it. There are great books at audible.com, including the Bible. One of the best books because it has so many books inside of it. It's a great bargain. And just for listeners, Audible.com is offering a free 30-day trial membership. Go to Bang Bang today. I think what that is is audible.com slash bang bang today to start your free trial today. So if you go today, you start today. Really, a lot of times people wouldn't use today twice in a sentence. But I think this is brave because if you go today, you start today. It's not like, hey, come to our website today. We'll hook you up a month from now. No, this is a true go today, start today situation. And I salute them for that. Audible.com slash bang bang. Show your support for Comedy Bang Bang and get a free 30 day trial at Comedy Bang Bang. No, audible.com slash Comedy Bang Bang. But this is important. Go today, start today. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. Yep. 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 We were doing yep, that yep, during yep, the break. Yep, yep. Yeah, boom, boom, Do you remember boom, those? Get a job. Sha na na na. Sha na 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 na. Get a job. Sha na 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 na. Whoa. Sha na 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 na. Whoa. Is there a too low for that? Oops, started too low. <laughs> the great thing about trying to start too low is that you can't, you have to concentrate so much on it, you can't look at anything. Mm -hmm. Your eyes All just you can over. stare at is your larynx in your mind. Your mind's <laughs> larynx. Right. Trying to push it down. Splinter of the mind's larynx. Do you remember, by Alan Dean Foster, <laughs> do you remember- Of course I do. Your President Nixon. Do you remember <laughs> those Muppets on Sesame Street that were aliens that were trying to learn about- Engineer Cody Ryan Earth does. culture. And what they would do is they would encounter something and then they would, uh, they would not know what it was, and they would look it up in their book of Earth things, huh. and then they would learn the word and they would repeat it. No. And how would they do it? They would look like a tel – there would be a telephone. Okay. And they would look at it, and I forget what their, their noise they would make when they didn't understand what something was. Like meep, was it? Nope. What's that? Was it like nope? Nope, 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 nope. Well, they was would, it like nope, 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 get a job. Sha na na na, sha na 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 na, wow. Sha na na na, sha na na. They would try to figure it out. If they couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. They would say they would call for the book, 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 and they would get their big book out, and then they would go phone, 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 and then the phone would ring. And it would fucking freak them out. And they uh -huh. would pull their jaws. Their jaws would go up over their eyes. What? Because they were scared. Wow. They were great. I was, as a kid, I thought they were hilarious and also terrifying. Wow. That, okay. So this was this has been on for a, a long time then. This is not recent. It's old. It's, it's old. Yeah. I don't know if they still do them. Are they making the jump to pay cable? <laughs> <laughs> Is Sesame Street going behind a paywall? Yeah, they're on HBO now. Are they no longer on the uh, They will PBS? be. The new ones are on HBO, and then it'll be a, a window of time before they go to PBS. Are they going to fuck on this show? They're totally going to fuck. Are the Muppets going to fuck? The Muppets going to fuck Khaleesi? <laughs> are the Muppets going to fuck Khaleesi? That's my one question, Jim Henson. Those Muppets going to fuck Khaleesi? Who am I talking to right now? <laughs> Do you understand the world's coming out of my mouth? Oh, it's Chris Tucker. <laughs> Chris Tucker wants to know, are the Muppets going to fuck Khaleesi? Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Are the Muppets going to fuck Khaleesi? I hope I meet him, and I hope he's on the show at some point so I can play uh, in that clip. <laughs> Honoring him 
and his work in He'll comedy. He'll love it. He'll love it. He'll love it. Alright, we need to get back to our countdown. This is your number seven. Number seven. All right, this actually is the latest episode. The most on recent. The, the most recent, yes. And this is one week after the previous How episode. Long? Well, it's been <laughs> one week since you looked at me. Bam, bam, chicken in China, the Chinese chicken. Wait, one week after the previous episode. After a good night in the morning. So, none of, October, November, it's a wash. Oh, no one like those. <laughs> no one like those, man. No one like those. Don't hear me now. <laughs> this is September 28th. This is episode 378. Just uh, uh, seven scant days later. And this is an episode called Mailer Demon. Oh, boy, oh, boy. This is, is it Mailer Damon. Damon, Mailer Damon, but You're he's welcome. yes. I understand he's a demon. Yep. Um, this I is, listened to this once. <laughs> you, <laughs> the court stipulates that you've listened to the other ones once. There's only one episode. Uh, let you've the listened. record reflect. <laughs> the defendant has listened once. <laughs> um, this is Jason Manzukas, who uh, we were talking about previously, and also Nick Kroll. And now also mentioned previously. Uh huh. Now uh, Jason J Dog Manzukas, he's been on the show a lot this year. He uh, was filming out of town. Uh, the previous year mm-hmm. a lot so he couldn't be on and he came to me early in the year and said I really want to be on make a concerted effort to be on the show more this year and yeah. we thank him a lot for that because um, he loves doing it he loves doing it I love doing it with him uh, I, there's a lot of people I love doing it with you I love doing it with Ben Schwartz I love doing it with Jay. I love doing it with all these people do you love doing it with Khaleesi do you hear the words coming out of my mouth I love doing it with them Zookas oh those muppets gonna fuck Khaleesi I know those muppets gonna Um, <laughs> I've done a whole 180 on this. It's and good now. now. I love it's it. good now. It's good now. <laughs> it's good now. <laughs> it's good now. <laughs> That's kind of a t-shirt. It's uh, good now. It's good now. Nah, come on. <laughs> uh, maybe Not everything's a t-shirt. Uh, or is it good now? <laughs> <laughs> Are those moments going to fuck Khaleesi is more of a t-shirt I than know, it's good now? But I like it's good now. <laughs> it's, it's good, good now. now. It's good now. Oh, it's good now. Oh, it's good now. <laughs> it's good now. <laughs> Um, this is the Mailer Damon, and uh, this is one week after the previous. Jason couldn't make Good Night in the Morning. He was invited, by the way. Oh, really? Yes. Yes, he was invited. What would that have been like? I don't know. It would have upset the whole chemistry of the room, probably. He would have asked so many questions (laughs) of Chasman and Sonny. Yeah, I bet. (laughs) Trying to force them into a weird corner. That's right. Um, he couldn't make that one, so he came this uh, uh, one week later. Seven seven days later. Seven days later. And uh, Kroll, also another guy who want, who wanted to do the show more this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe he is in three separate episodes uh, this year, as well as uh, oh. uh, including the recent uh, uh, Gil Faison and did, George St. Did one not want to be in my show so much this year. Uh oh, <laughs> that's a god. I'm glad he was making an effort to be on one show. <laughs> I think I may have just lucked out, maybe, uh, and hit him uh, on a few days that he was available. But maybe. Um, maybe. So uh, we. But Kroll doesn't often come in and say, okay, this is what I want to do in this episode. Mm-hmm. He, a lot of times what we'll do is I'll say, hey, do, is there anything you want to do? He'll just go, I'll think of it while we do it. And quite often, uh, as was the case in this episode, um, just something that we talked about in conversation, he was he was himself and Jason is himself the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kroll will just leap in with an idea for a character. Right. This one was very successful and occurred the entire episode. And this was just based off of us talking about wondering what those emails you get from the mailer Damon were. <laughs> right. And he decided to portray the mailer Demon mm-hmm. or Damon uh, to much success, and uh, that is what <laughs> and we're- great acclaim. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're going to hear right now. This is your number seven. Number seven. But what if Mailer Damon were to brand? Oh. Hello. Yes. Uh, Sam, do you mind getting the door? Sure. Yep. All right. Come in. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Yes, I am the Mailer Damon. Oh my God! What? We conjured him. Oh, we said yes. Mailer Damon about eight times, yep. I believe. If in you say Mailer Damon eight times, you conjure the Mailer Damon. Yes, that's right. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You're so polite. Thank you for knocking. But well, as you all know, I am. Uh, Most people just barge in. <laughs> I know. I'm my 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 manners are what makes me the Mailer Damon. For I was at one time the butler. Ask Jeeves. <laughs> oh, wait. And after being uh, possessed by a demon, I became the Mailer Damon. Oh, 
Oh my God! So you, that's why you are dressed like an old school butler. That is a, correct, Sir Ackerman. <laughs> Thank you so much. Your manners are impeccable. Uh, wow. And uh, Mr. Mansukis. Oh wow! Yes, I have prepared an egg free omelet for you. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's one of his things. That is a thing. How does mine? How does Ask Jeeves? Uh, Wait, do you know this? Mailer because Damon know because that? you comb the internet for information at all times, and I have freed oh. myself up to free things up for you, wow. so you are free to make the best of your comedy. Wow, this is actually a dream come true. So you know everything there is to know on the internet. Yes, Mr. Ackerman. Okay, well, uh, uh, let's ask him questions about the internet. What have you always wanted to know? Oh, man. I mean, uh, you must know everything that there is to know. That is correct, Mr. Ackerman, and I would say I was asked Jeeves until I was possessed by a demon. Wh- how? What is the distance between Chicago and uh, San Francisco? The distance is 1.7 thousand miles. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's great. That's so longer cool. than I would have thought. So cool. And it was so quick on it, right? Yeah. It was right there. Amazing. And I've gotten rid of the extra zeros so that you are not wasting time hearing. Oh, thank one, you. 1,700 uh, 1, miles. Because on it, And that's no joke because like I waste so much of my day mm-hmm. looking at zeros. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I'm, I'm looking, looking at, at one, one right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> For if it wasn't given the time, you wouldn't have come up with that beautiful joke I together at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, might I say that you gentlemen have a wonderful sense of humor that you share in common? Oh, thank, thank you, you so, much. so much. Can I ask you a question, Mailer Damon? S- 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 what do you? What, what is that? I'm just you? cutting your hair slightly, Mister Ackerman. <laughs> I noticed that it could use a trim. <laughs> thank you so much, Jeeves. So, do slash you, Demon, D- 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 Mailer Jeeves, you call me Jeeves? Oh, oh whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-oh. Jason, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Mailer Damon, we'll be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back. Hey, Jason. He was so polite, I think that we totally glossed over that he's a demon. <laughs> no, we gotta be careful. <laughs> we ha- we careful. literally have like a demon who oh, can no, he's freely when he's lemon sorbet. Oh, oh, thank you so oh, much. Such uh, a cleanse nice the palate, palate cleanser. <laughs> wow. Um, what do you think of Bing? <laughs> Oh, Bing? Yeah. Well, I have love Bing. I've used it since day one. Mm. I, I had a question I wanted to ask you. Yes? Did you cut Scott's hair because you uh, have access to all of the pictures of Scott and know what the correct length Based for his hair Based off of giddy, yeah. giddy image searches from oh. Scott's major appearances on red carpets of and course. whatnot, as well as a, a collection of all the best earwolf photos, oh, yes. I have collaborated with all of my various demonites yeah. to decide what is the ideal length for Scott Ackerman. Oh, nice. What do you got? Can you change my Wikipedia photo, please, to one <laughs> where I'm not 30 pounds overweight? Isn't it amazing that the, the tiny demons at Wikipedia will not allow us to change our photos at, at <laughs> right. a whim. That, and it used to be an older one, and now they, they updated it to one that was like slightly two years yes. newer, but it, it's still not a current. Isn't it amazing what technology can do to ruin your vanity? I guess so. Or, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Did you snip off my hair because you needed my lock of hair for some other purpose? It has nothing to do with the digital cauldron that I am doing to reverse the operations that I've created to let me rule the internet. Oh my god, look at all those ones and zeros. <laughs> that digital cauldron Scott, Jason I feel like he is doing something to I think him. he is why else would he bring up the digital cauldron I don't know I don't know why he would bring that do you think I think feel like we need a digital exorcist or something I don't know what's going on I don't know you know I, I, I did take an online digital exorcism course you what yeah I did, did it's well, sort of yeah. like the universal life friends church. asked you to, to <laughs> digitally yeah, exercise they don't want to get child. a catholic in there yeah buffalo <laughs> chicken dip oh what? my gosh oh. thank you so much do you have some tortilla chips with yes this, of course okay. they are all gluten free for Scotty <laughs> and egg free for Senor Mansukas thank you so much man. Oh, this man. is del- oh I my prefer gluten free with this is but egg full actually well here we go then oh thank you so much Let's not get these mixed up. Yeah, so Jason, I took a uh, an online uh, digital exorcism course. I and, feel uh, bad. I feel bad in what respect? I feel bad the mailer Damon is ignoring Nick. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it's really strange. It's completely ignoring Nick. Nick is just sulking. Nick is so bummed. It's Damn. fine. <laughs> it's fine. Nick, do you want to get in on this? Nick, no. Come over he here. Talk he's to not us. interested no, in me. I'm it's fine. No, I would be. Look. He just might not know who you are. No, he he's looked at me. He said, "Hey, man, I I know I know your stuff." 
I know his stuff. Oh, of course, of course. How could you not? How could you not know? He's nearly ubiquitous in the comedy scene. Sure. It doesn't mean that I have to enjoy his work. Well, okay. All right. Yeah, for okay. sure, for sure. Hey, uh, I uh, I had something I wanted to say to you, Mailer Demon. Yes? Uh, you know, Monsieur uh, Ackerman. I just, I kind of wanted to say uh, the power of... Steve Jobs compels you. Leave this body. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that was me. I had something in my throat. Yeah, are you all right, oh, Nick? Nick? you okay? God, yeah, no, he... You're foaming at the mouth. I, I was drinking a smoothie, and it, I got like a frozen banana that stuck That smoothie in turned into a hearty. <laughs> no, but go on, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Go on. Uh, the power Another of, brilliant turn of freeze. Yes. Uh, the power of Steve Jobs compels you to leave the body of Ask Jeeves, and uh, mm-hmm. I cast thee uh, back into the dark, deep internet where thy belongs. Aha. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I see what you have tried to do. Oh, yes. Boy. What's that? Oh. Well, you have tried to exercise the mm-hmm. demon that lives within me. Uh-huh. 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 Yes. Unfortunately, as Mr. Jobs has passed Uh-oh. and was never much of a power in the underlying functioning of the internet. Internet, but he but knew a lot of, about design and aesthetics. Exactly, you have to admit that. Exactly, sir. But as far as zeros and ones, I would say the Wozniak name is the one that <laughs> shall not be spoken. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's well, good we to just know. told us that. Yeah. I wonder if I should maybe repeat what <laughs> I said with, with the Wozniak. Wozniak. Yeah, maybe I'll do it's that. A trick. It, it might be a trick. It might be a trick. Uh, it might be a trick. It might. It might conjure Steve Wozniak. Mint julep. Which we do not. Oh, a mint julep. God, I love a nice mint julep in the vault. So refreshing. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is refreshing. Try it. If it conjures Just Steve Wozniak, then why yeah, not? Right. Hey, uh, Mailer Demon. Yes. I wanted to say something. Yes. Uh, Scorch Rockman. Well, I, I kind of felt like the power of Steve Wozniak compels thee to leave the body of Ask Jeeves and be cast out into the deep dark internet where thy belongs. Boom, boom. Nick, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just doing an impression of uh, Roger a Rabbit. I'm doing an impression Uh-oh. of dial-up. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was Roger Rabbit. I never realized how much Roger Rabbit sounds like a dial-up. Yep. Boom, 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 boom. Anyway, I was trying to get Jeeves' uh, um, Mailer Damon's attention. Just, oh, man, okay. You just called you get Jeeves. He's, he's just literally has his back to you. Do you dare to call me Jeeves? Oh, Nick, I oh, wish Nick, you hadn't I'm done sorry. that. I shall smite you to the realm of Alta Vista. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, not Alta Vista. No, get back. <laughs> no, Nick. Nick. Oh, God, Nick. No. Oh. Nick just disappeared into his actual phone computer. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Holy crazy. cow. Blue really? corn tortilla chip with oh. a black bean salsa. I am starting to feel full, but I, <laughs> but don't, I can't don't stop mind eating. if I do. It's uh, like when you go to a wedding, there's so many tasty treats. Oh, uh, yum city. Uh, that didn't work. And Steve jo- Wozniak was not conjured. I think we just got to lean into this and figure right. out what's going on. Well, now we the Nick's gone. We got to go deeper. Sorry, gentlemen. I yes, couldn't yeah. help but overhear you whispering. Huh? Oh, no. Was there no. something that I was not providing for you? No, you're doing great. I this mean, is a I great love the Minjou. Could I just I, ask I you use... a question? Yes. Ooh, boy. As all I seem to do is serve you, yeah. Yeah. why is it that you are trying to exercise me? <laughs> well, you got really mad at Nick and you, uh, you know, cast him into Alta Vista. Yes. You don't kind of want, don't want that to happen to us. And you're also like... Well, I like your comedy. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll Fair take enough. that. I'll, I'll yeah. Take, yeah. I love How Did This Get Me. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. And Comedy Bang Bang, the show is my favorite. <laughs> the TV show, not of, the podcast. Not the podcast. <laughs> okay. I enjoy the podcast. You're like the opposite of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> In fact, I am. Uh, I would say it's of some concern to me that you have a digital cauldron and have snipped off some of my hair. And, yep. uh, but uh, what, what do you plan to do with that? Yeah. Do you have a bigger plan, I guess, is the question. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. we're trying to prevent some sort of future catastrophe. Yes, if you could just hold your chin straight, I'm just snipping out some of the grays from your beard. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, you look about 10 years younger. My goodness. 58. (laughs) Sorry, you were saying something. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I just, I can't help but feel like you're Putting into action some sort, some sort of, of plan diabolical plan or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean to characterize cauldron. your plan as diabolical. You have hairs right. from each of us now. Right. Yeah. I'm concerned that you are. Your intentions are not to make us look better, but are to yeah. ex- exorcise or are exorcise you sure that my, some sort of. 
My exercise. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I took a digital exercise class. You brought her. You exercise. <laughs> Tracy Anderson. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Hey, do you need any pubes? By the way, I'm looking to get these trimmed a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed. <laughs> right, come on down here if you mind. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get rid of those pubers. Yep. Do you have great pubes yet? No, I don't. Do you? Yep. Really? Yeah. I can't tell if I do or not. Yeah, actually, because I'm, bl- of, I'm uh, very blonde. I don't like discussing my pubes, pubes on the on the air. I don't mind if really? you cut them. I don't want to talk about them. Whoa, yeah. Okay. I don't want people imagining it's my. Fine. Pubes. We don't have to talk about it. I mean, you know what I mean? Just like imagine you don't every want other imagining your pubes. Yeah. That just of even admitting I have them seems strange. <laughs> What you are you are embarrassed to admit that you've gone through puberty and have pubic hair? <laughs> there should be like a menopause for men where we like there should not go, be. go backwards. There should not be men's rights. <laughs> men's, <laughs> men's rights. Thank you. All right, Mailey. We I deserve menopause as well. Oh, you no. should talk to Bob Duke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're gonna start talking about police lives matter in a second. <laughs> Puba bagel. <laughs> okay, that's where I draw the line on eating. I am, I am not gonna eat a pizza bagel with your own. Human care. <laughs> totally oh. full. Totally full. Dare you determine oh, what I oh, serve God. you? Oh. No, you, you, we're not determining what you serve. Toil, <laughs> toil, pubes and bubbles. Uh-oh. I feel like I offered him that pubes and <laughs> tied somehow into the incantation. And let this oh. be a warning to you both. Oh, it's just a warning. If you defy the treats I provide you, we shall go to a commercial break. Oh, okay. I don't want to go to a commercial break. We've only been going about 10 minutes or so at this point. I, maybe I better eat these uh, pube bagels. I guess we're going to eat these puber bagels. <laughs> Wait, am I, uh, which ones are they? Are these J? Oh, these are gray. These must be Jason's. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I All think right. I've got yours. It's not bad. It's not. I mean, you you. It's not an ingredient I would normally like yeah. to use, like kale or yep. or sprouts or something it's like a, that. It's but a it, collision of flavors. Yeah. I'm sorry. You'd like to put kale and sprouts on your pizza bagels? <laughs> not on. I'm just saying in any uh, recipe. Aha. I'm not a total weirdo. Do you eat a lot of sprouts? Yeah, I like sprouts. Really? Yeah. You I know, I know they taste like like dirt or grass. I can't or remember the last time I ate a sprout. Really? Yep. What about on a sandwich or something? They're uh, nice on a sandwich. Nick, guys, I crawled back in. <laughs> Nick, are Nick. You okay? Yeah, I was able to escape the digital realm. That was incredible. I saw just like a hand, almost like your cousin It, coming out of your phone. Yeah. And uh, and then you just... What did I miss? What do you guys say about? <laughs> oh, We just ate each other's pubes. We just pubes. ate each other's pubes on a bagel. And then you now you're talking about spreads? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> Yo, you're going, <laughs> Wait, back, you're going in? back in. He's going back into the wow. digital cauldron. God, maybe he likes it in there. At some point, I want to interview the actor who does you, though. Oh, yeah. The actor yeah. who, the guy, uh, the who, actor who Jason plays Manzucas. Jason Mantukas. Yes. Yeah, I think that would be really interesting. I to think, do on yeah, the guy's great. Yeah. yeah. The guy is talented. Jeffrey, but, I mean, I love your characterization. What's You're his name? Jeffrey Characterweedies? <laughs> Jeffrey Characterweedies. <laughs> Jeffrey Characterweedies. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk to him right now? I would love to talk Let's to talk Jeffrey to him. Character Wheaties. Okay, Jeffrey, can you set aside the Jason Manzucas persona for a second? <clears throat> shake it out, shake it out, good. Okay, here we go. Jeffrey, hey, Jeffrey. How you guys doing? Hey, we're doing great. <laughs> Pretty good. What's happening? Um, how's it going? I, Real good. I've, I don't believe I've ever spoken to you on this. This episode's sh- going really good. Yeah, you're really funny. I'm it. really happy with it so yeah. far. I've great. never spoken to you on air. I don't believe. Oh, it's so weird. We talk so much in person. Yeah. But yeah, no, you're this right. This is We've a lot like that, that James Adomian episode. Where, oh, yeah. Where he, he, yeah, he was himself for a while. Yeah. Ooh, that's weird. Yeah, it is weird. It or is like a when little... you talk to Paul F. Tompkins on the yeah. best of. It's a little weird talking to you right now. Oh, but... It's not that weird. We <laughs> talk all the time. Can you tell us about your background? You've come up with such a deranged uh, sort of repulsive character. Oh, I mean, that's just Jason, you know? Um, yeah, but well, you're not... So you think of him as like a real person. Well, you know, you have to. You have to think of the person you're mm-hmm. playing as a real person. Otherwise, it's almost can impossible I ask you to play qu- them. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. When did you come up with the egg allergy? Oh. Yeah. It's that, was something moment, no one has. Was that the aha it moment? It was years. Oh. Guys, I for years was doing this character without an egg allergy and yeah, could not, not get quite it working. off the ground. No. It wasn't sticky. People couldn't mm-hmm. get into it. Yeah. But the inherent vulnerability of the egg allergy mixed with the utter reprehensible nature of the character's point of it view. It balances mm-hmm. it out. Yeah, really, exactly. Really mm-hmm. does something. And you're not allergic to eggs. You're eating one right now. No. Oh, I eat eggs all the time. Yeah. And to answer your question, it was in a groundlings class. <laughs> oh, they're great. It was in a groundlings class. You know, because one of the teachers was like, find something scary. 
scary. Yeah. Kevin, How long were you a groundling? Were you in Sunday Company? Or? I never got that far. Oh, okay. You never just, they took, asked me to stop took level. Class. Yeah. They, the minute I came up with the allergy, they were like, "You graduated." Wow. Get wow. out. They don't even want you on the stage. Yeah, You're wow. And then you went to UCB. And then I went to New York and I started doing UCB. Wow. So so only as, exclusively as Jason Manzucas. As Jason Manzucas, because I realized that Jeffrey, yeah, character Wheaties. <laughs> Yeah, no one's interested Just, in him. Nobody's interested. This, it's all. It's Nobody's like it's like a Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman exactly. situation. Everyone says that at the ground, he had so many great characters, but he just wanted to stick I with Pee Wee Herman. I left Los Angeles. I shed every piece of of Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I arrived in New York as Jason Manzukis. Now did not Jeffrey Character Wheaties is pale skin. Yep, straight hair. Yep. You you have a lot of makeup on right yes, now and heavily. a fake beard. It's a oh, it's always a fake beard. Yeah. Do you want to take off the beard? I'd love to get a look at your uh, real face. Well, uh, do you are you going to want me to do Jason later in the show? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I have probably. some spirit gum right here. Okay, so thanks. you won't do. J- <laughs> Oh. oh man, you were Ooh. so handsome without that. Oh, thank you. Why do you have all this? Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Hello, oh, Mailer Demon. Oh, Mailer Demon. <laughs> Wait, you ran out of here with your beard, with your fake beard. beard. Oh, brother. Wow, he now, loves if, hair. If someone were on the internet were to make a, would you like it if someone were to make like a t-shirt or an image of uh, Jason character Wheaties like on a Wheaties box? Wait, Jeffrey yeah. character Wheaties? Yes, Jeffrey, Jeffrey character sorry. Wheaties. And I think, I think I've seen a picture of one of Jason's oldest headshots, I believe is a picture of you, oh, character Wheaties. That's my headshot. Before, yeah, that was yeah. your headshot, but yeah. people have found it. So you would already it. darken the skin slightly. Yes. Slightly, but slightly. it still looks, it's in black and white, so yes, it looks a little a, yeah. lightened. And you don't have the beard, and you look very, very handsome. No, that, That's, was my, that was Jeffrey Character Wheaties' <laughs> right. first entry. And people dug it up, and they attributed yes. it to you, because it's obviously so they recognized Luckily, you. I managed to put the name Jason Manzoukas on it. Right, yeah. Um, so that I, now, as long as it's on the internet, people like the Mailer Demon, they know that it's yeah. Jason, not Jeffrey. What did so you digitally, to, I don't exist. What, what, what are you actually like? I mean, oh. you're so different from Jason. Such a good question. Um, I find him to be a fucking drip. Yeah, he is kind of annoying, isn't he? Right? He's kind of a drip. Yeah. Um, it's like sometimes you meet an actor who you love, and then you talk to them, and you're like, oh, that person that is nothing. That happened to me really recently with you. <laughs> with me, Nick Kroll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, oh, I got to um, go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be back oh, in a no second. No oh, Okay. <laughs> yes, hello. Oh, Fabrice, Fabrice. <laughs> yes, um, hello. What are you doing? Here. A beloved character. <laughs> are you? I'm so excited. Are, have you finished stocking up our craft service table yes, out there? Yes, I the put earth? out all the tiny little, tiny little street cheeses. Thank you so and much. I put I out everything. Those. Jeffrey. Hello. Hello. Wait, you know Jeffrey? Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, Fabrice. Jeffrey, yes. you know oh, Fabrice. I, I know. I oh, I know Jeffrey. <laughs> character Wheaties. Oh, really? Did I you? see this motherfucker on every set that Jason Manzoukas <laughs> is an actor on. Okay, relax. This motherfucker. Let me tell you one thing, okay. you motherfucker. Okay, relax. This motherfucker has complained. I've seen him sprinkling pubes on my character, few my, on my table. Wait a minute. And then Je- saying, Jeffrey, that, you sprinkle pubes on? It's more an act of aggression than it is a food source. <laughs> what? That's right. It's an act of aggression. You trying to get me fired off every job I've been on. Why don't I, you guys like each other? I don't care for Fabrice. Fabrice. No, this motherfucker, this motherfucker. What don't you like about him? Do you think that he's some sort of stereotype or something of of a bygone age? <laughs> That's right. He wants to put me back in 2005. And but don't I you realize that people still are like this? I still exist. I'm just and saying. I am more powerful. And I am elegant. I'm just and I saying. am strength. We all can't excel at long-term character work. <laughs> oh, that's You right. are oh, one of the best at it. I that's am. right. I oh, am. that's right. Just because he ca- created a three-dimensional character who's allergic to <laughs> eggs, he gets to live forever. <laughs> Just ask you this: Does Fabrice Fabrice have any vulnerabilities whatsoever? I well, that's a good point. No, it's true. The one thing I'm allergic to is assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean people who are assholes or or people's assholes? People's assholes. <laughs> oh, and that's I'll gotta tell be you this: terrible. Jeffrey Character Wheaties <laughs> is one big old butthole. <laughs> What are that's an interesting question though, Fabrice. I've yes. never seen you have any yes, sort of vulnerability. That, that's true. I mean, you have things that you like to do, which when you poetry. have grown up with this voice, this attitude in the places I grew up, you big a big old wall like the Berlin Wall. Yeah, you're very that's defensive. Right, the Iron Curtain. But I bet I I bet it's all because of uh, underneath. Uh, I'm a little pussy cat. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah. That's right. Do you ever get vulnerable with a loved one? Yeah, all the time. I let my lovers walk all over me. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. I give people money, but I am strength. I am opulence. I am luxury. I'm getting a weird vibe off of you two. Were you guys? No, did you guys I don't ever? Talk about it. It, is that why Fabrice, you don't like Fabrice each other? and Jeffrey character weedies. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys used to we, have, a, have a thing? We, or? Had, we had a thing. We maybe had a moment. We had a thing. Maybe we had some time. We had, we had the potential of a thing. It's interesting because, Jeffrey, I know you are a gay man, and I've known that sure. about you as long as I've known you, and which is so interesting that you play this character, which is just such a sex monster, <laughs> just like a disgusting... A Lothario. <laughs> gross Lothario, yeah. yeah. And so, almost hedonistic, <laughs> almost like a Bacchanal. Yeah, and like you made it, up all these weird stories about things done in movie theaters uh -huh. and flipping Vs. Are, and Flipping through vaginas. It's yeah. just... Like, uh, like someone who almost seems like... Like if you looked at a Greek statue of Bacchanal, you're like a goat head, like, Bac like a, a human head with like a goat body, like a <laughs> yeah. Bacchus. Yeah, that's where I have seen. That's what you based your character on. I did base oh. a lot of Jason on a statue of Bacchus. So Jason that has a Jason, human head and a goat body. As a gay man, is Jason satire? <laughs> That's right. The character of Jason Hanzik is, is a very trenchant social satire. Social satire of what, of of, a of current social mores. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's wow. right. This is it's one of the biggest pieces. It's one of the most prolific pieces of social satire of the 21st it's century. It's great. You're like Banksy or something. And, and just to be clear, guess who came up with Jason Manzukis? One Jeffrey, hint, Jeffrey it was Cattoris. not Jeffrey Cavartawidi. <laughs> <laughs> so you came up with Jason Manzukis for That's race? right. No. 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 Yes. yes no. What? what was the, excuse he me. Helped. The original character he wanted to come up with was named Janice Mandukar. <laughs> Janice Mandukar. And what was Janice like? Okay, she was a very interesting character, and she was not. She interesting. was very good. She was allergic to bees. She had a very. Severe I mean, everyone bee, doesn't like being bee stung allergy. by bees. So how vulnerable? I mean, but she. What? Here's she what would was swell the, up. She, right. Here's what was the thing: is she loved honey. Oh, she loved okay. honey like Winnie the And I was like, boring, <laughs> boring. <laughs> and I said, what about, I was like, no, how about this? How about one of these like Greek ass motherfuckers, <laughs> but grew up like waspy in yeah. like New England yeah. and he allergic to eggs. And what's he dressed like? What's he dressed like? He always <laughs> wears white shirts and blue jeans. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't know because choices were too much and he could bleach his shirts because yeah. of weird OCD <laughs> shit. But it's like a Pee Wee Herman costume for him, exactly. right? Exactly. Number seven. Oh, good stuff. Number Slevin. Number Slevin. And that, by the way, uh, Vol speaking of top tens, I should be just happy with what we got. Vulture was very nice to uh, call Comedy Bang Bang the podcast the best comedy That's podcast very true. of the year, the number one. That's very um, true. And they said that this was the best episode of it of the year. So they uh, they voted for this as their number one. This is your- They were so close yeah, to being correct. Yeah, number seven. Not that close. Well, yeah. hey, Jack, <laughs> and, Jack and Jill had a great time at it. The well. <laughs> um, <laughs> worked out for them, didn't it? Um, no, it didn't. <laughs> Are you familiar with their story about the well? I mean, they got famous. Oh, it, oh that's all that that's matters. That's all Your about, generation, baby. all you care about is going viral. Yeah. Listen, my name is Birdman, yeah. and I'm against you. Hey, they're the original going viral, baby. Oh, Nursery shit. Nursery rhymes are the original going viral. Nursery rhymes are the original going viral. <laughs> that is a t-shirt. That is absolutely a t-shirt. It's good now. Do you think a t-shirt is, that is a t-shirt? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let's experiment. How mad do you want to get with this dumb shit? I don't know. Um, that is a t-shirt. That was a lot of fun uh, with those guys. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that. And uh, we're going to end at this point. We're going to... Sad. Uh, it's very sad. It's Christmas Eve in Hollis, Queens. <laughs> Moss cooking chili <laughs> chicken and collard greens, though. I will say that. At and one point they say in that movie, when they in that song, when they describe all the... Do you think songs are movies? <laughs> I do think they're little, they're little movies you can't see. If they paint a great enough picture, yeah. yeah they they're little are. movies you're listening to through a door. <laughs> um, that's what songs are. <laughs> they, that's what songs are. <laughs> Are to, to me. me.
That's what the, songs uh, are that's what songs to are me. me. They uh, talk about uh, all the different things that indicate it's Christmas. Sure. Um, and one of them is the hawk is out. <laughs> what does that mean? I, I don't know. It may be something specific to uh, their Hollis Queens? culture, perhaps. To their culture? To their, I mean, to their curious and unique culture. I will say that's how I learned what collard greens were when that song came out. From that song? Yeah, from that song. Yeah, I was like, what are they saying? Collard, collard beans? What's a collared bean? A bean with a collar on it. Yeah, so I, I looked it up. Picture a bean wearing a little jacket, <laughs> a cream-colored jacket. <laughs> I'm Who's a this bean. guy? Oh, this is a fellow. <laughs> he comes from- A fellow? He comes from- uh, My name is Arthur Fellow. Abernathy Fellow. Abernathy Fellow. <laughs> a. a. Fellow. Oh I like to imagine a bean wearing a, 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 a cloak I, uh, or a cream-colored jacket. Is it Dr. Fellow? Is it Mr. Fellow? It's Professor Fellow. Professor Fellow, yes. really? It's an honorary title. Can, oh, okay. Yes. Bestowed upon by you? Uh, yes. <laughs> Okay, can I ask why? I wrote a letter to myself, what? addressing myself as Dr. <laughs> oh, like, Professor Fellow. Like the WGA, copywriting something. Yes, hello. Um, why are you wondering about this? Why are you thinking about this? I like to th well, because I like to put a face to my food. Mm. You see, it feels as if I, I am You're actually eating something alive? Yes. And killing it? Yes, because I, it's forbidden to do so. <laughs> I see. You mustn't eat living things. Can I just say that you are a weirdo? <laughs> Is that your, well, that sounds like a t-shirt to me. <laughs> that was a song. That was a movie. It was a movie you're listening to through a door. Yep. All right, we got to go. All right. All right. This is Christmas Eve. Have a great holiday. We're going to be back here on Monday with part three of the countdown, and uh, we're going to take you out. We're going to play uh, the Solo Bolo Olympic uh, Song Challenge. We're going to play someone uh, set that to music. So oh, good. backing a backing track with good. strings and everything. So we're going to play that on our way out. So <laughs> they hired an orchestra. <laughs> you have a ninety-piece orchestra. <laughs> um, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Hakuna right Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. Ain't no passing grace. Chimney, chim, chimney, chim, chim, jury. Deputy
Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. Don't worry, but don't much be happy. Everybody sing a kuna matata. What a wonderful phrase. Hey everyone, just want to remind you, we've stocked up the Earwolf store with lots of stuff to wear, hang, or give this holiday season. Check out the new Comedy Bang Bang hoodies, a limited edition screen printed poster, or our instant classic Hey Nong Man, or all joking a salad tees. Each sale supports the show and helps us employ a guy named Nick that ships all this stuff from a bunker in LA. Hi Nick! Support Earwolf and Comedy Bang Bang by visiting Earwolf.com, click shop, and get 10% off with the code Bang Bang. Yeah. 